A wizard is never late. Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. Yay! Here's a message of importance to millions of people who are continually pale and washed out, weak and run down. Doctors will tell you that these conditions are often caused by a deficiency of... Oh, The iron you need to keep you physically fit and mentally alert. Medical studies show that two out of three women and many, many men lack the daily iron your body requires in a form your body can easily use and put to work. Every dose gives you more than your daily minimum iron requirement. We are away. We are away. We are not alone. We are striving for more. So if you're not getting the iron your body needs, we are away. If you feel weak, run down, and are easily upset, start taking today. I'm starting off fresh and I feel good. Uh-huh. I look good. I smells good. Uh-huh. I am good. Happy Friday, my friend. Thank God it's Friday. There we go. For some reason, just being just a tad wonky. Just not quite got the uh, responsiveness that I thought we would have on that soundboard. TGIF, everybody. Welcome to Have No Sphere right here on Iron Real Media YouTube channel. We're on DLive. We're on Odyssey. We are on Twitter. We are on Rockfin. And hopefully, as of some point today, since I've already forgotten that I was going to do it, we're going to be on freaking Telegram as well. At least... That is the plan. And of course, now it's still not working. I don't know. Who the fuck knows? Welcome, everybody. We've got a really exciting show for you one way or the other. And uh, we're going to jump right into it and say hello to the normal crew, starting off with one of my favoriteest ladies of all times, Mrs. Carrie Nodell. You might know her from her channel, Aisling717, here on the YouTubes. Cammy, my dear, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. How are you doing? Oh. That's not the way to do it. You take her right back. How are you doing, Josh? <laughs> I am getting exactly what I deserve. <laughs> <laughs> it is fair enough. We do have a great crew. Um, I'm going to let you pass by me quickly to get to the exciting people tonight. I'm doing the fun stuff in the chat with my husband asking if he ordered the very cool Chinese magic mirror I saw today and blew my mind. So maybe you have. he's maybe ordering it for it. That means he hasn't ordered it yet. Is that what it means? Is that what it means, sweetheart? Now I'm curious. Do you call it a Chinese magic mirror? Now, don't crucify me here, but I'm pretty sure that this is one of those times where the term oriental works perfectly. It's an oriental mirror, yeah? No, it's a Chinese magic mirror. That is what it's called, is a Chinese magic mirror. And it does something remarkable. It's a concave, um, polished piece of brass that when you shine a point si source light on at the sun or a single point size, like a single LED, it will project what's on the back of it. Interesting. Oh, yeah. It is remarkable. Um, we can, yeah. 
We can maybe even go into it a little bit later. I've got some cool visuals on it, but we have so much fun stuff to do, but this has me intrigued. It's really fascinating. It broke Dave um, Weiss's brain this morning. or I, No, it didn't break it. It made it, his brain hurt. So I guess the only question that remains is, if it was made in China, can you still call it Oriental? Or is Oriental like time period based? Or is like anything Oriental? I think Are my speaker wires Oriental? Do I have Oriental speaker wires? Could I charge more if I market them as Oriental? I don't know. Oriental applies to inanimate objects, I think. Animate objects you wouldn't call Oriental. That's rude, crude, and sociably unacceptable. However... An oriental Chinese magic mirror, I think, works just well, provided it does come from somewhere in the. Asia yeah, but region. if you go and order oh. it, if you go <laughs> to order it at Grand Illusions, you're not going to find the oriental mirror. You're just going to find the. Bob dropped a link in there. It's called the Chinese magic mirror. You know why? Because my guess is 97% of the things in that store could be considered oriental so it doesn't make much sense to market everything as oriental well this one you know what they could have done on it is is um this particular one on the back side of it they have printed uh, the chinese signs of the zodiac so it says shine sunlight on the apparently blank blank metal mirror and the chinese signs of the zodiac will appear and what's neat about these little magic mirrors is, is it's not happening as you think and going it back. It's quite a um, holographic experience, almost um, fascinated. Steve Mold, Stephen Mold, um, who does physics, dropped a fabulous, I don't know, Bob, if you can drop that in there too, but he did a really, really good video. They got me, I woke up and saw that he had a new video. Um, and that got me going today into fascination land. And this, again, is a good reason when you look at any time you're looking at the way our realm is described and how our skies are like a vault of wet molten looking glass or a rainbow bridge, any type of um, imagery, when you think of the sky that they put in there, they put mirrors. And I think it's really important that people, when trying to plot the sky, know exactly what can be done with smoke and mirrors? <laughs> Things are not always where, as where they appear to be is what I'm trying to say. One of my favorite movies when I was a little kid was this movie called FX. And it was all about this guy that did movie special effects and got himself, you know, in this real tense. Hell yeah. Situation. Movie. And he had to use his skills as a, movie special effects artist to make it He's out of an alive. Australian gentleman actually. <laughs> I think that's Brian, right. Brian Brian oh, I used to know his name. Sorry. Brian Brown. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah you know Brian Brown. That's uh -huh. him. Yeah, he was badass in that movie, dude. Man. He was awesome. Mm. Yeah, that was good shit. <laughs> Shout out Travis. You wouldn't get it. This is a dating stream. Anyway, we can move I along. Yes, yeah, let's move start. on and I'll drop it into the chat and move I on and be quiet for the rest here. of it. But Chinese magic mirrors are very cool is the title of this video. And I just dropped it in the chat. This is great because our guests have been here multiple times, just never together here at the same time or anywhere else at the same time. So this will be a first once we finally get there. Let's say hello to Mr. Walter Johnson. He's got a channel here on YouTube, Flat Earth Head. Walter, how in the hell are you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm well rested. We had a great morning. I'm going to shut up because we've got uh -huh. hours of goodies. That's to what cover Kimmy here. said 10 minutes ago. <laughs> oh, see. But I'm good. I'm here. Thank you all. Uh, great day. We had a great conversation before we went live. Again, poor Liz has to stay up till ungodly hours just to be able to hopefully stay awake long enough to get into the good stuff. And we were saying it all before we went live because we were getting some introductions and stuff out of the way. And then one thing leads to another and pretty soon we're doing a show and I even hit the live button. So I had to stop it all, go live. And here we are right back to where we started just rambling around. That's me more of a mad nomad. Unlike the nomad nomad. Mr. Zachary Zabala, you might know him as, as, from his channel here on YouTube. Good times for all, Zachary. How are you doing, sir? 
Hey, Josh. Hey, everybody. Uh, yeah, really excited for tonight. It's I'm so glad that Campbell and Mike um, get to finally, you know, meet and cross ideas. And it's just really cool to be a part of that, I think. Um, yeah, honored to be here. So, yeah, I'm ready. All right. Yeah, because it seems like it's been a while. I was kind of scrolling through this, our older stuff, and it seemed like it had been a little bit of time since uh, we'd had Campbell on. So if you guys aren't familiar, as if you even might be. Crawl out from under the rock. Right. It's okay. <laughs> I'm going to check out a couple of channels. Autodidactic 2 and, of course, Autodidactic. Um, by that name, I'm sure you recognize Campbell. Campbell, welcome back to Have No Sphere in the Iron Realm. It's always an absolute pleasure to have you here. You are just absolutely killing it out there with your live streams, with all the stuff you're putting out. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Oh, thank you very much for having me. Thank you, thank you. And, yeah, thank you for all the kind words. Hello to everyone in chat. Glad to be here. And, yeah, hello, Mike. It would be good to have a chat and, and sort of, um, yeah, sort of cross ideas and stuff. So, Looking forward to it. Yeah, well, me too. This is where we're going to get some of the real meat and potatoes because we had Mike Stellium 7 on the first time just not too long ago, like maybe a couple of months ago. And we had him on to talk about biogeology and all the cool stuff he's found. And that just didn't quite work out because we never can seem to stay too focused. And we ended up getting off into all kinds of other uh Things from Mike's past and dredging up all sorts of history he wasn't necessarily particularly expecting to have to talk about. But then he came back just a couple of weeks ago and we kind of started to scrape the surface, so to speak, on some of this biogeology and these heart stones and some of the crazy stuff he's been doing. So, And we knew we needed to get him back on. So we wanted to do that. We knew we wanted to get Campbell back on again soon. We tried to do that a couple of weeks ago and seems like it didn't work out. Then we tried again. And I think something came up for Campbell. And then we finally said, all right, we're just going to do it. And hey, well, Mike's coming. Why don't, we, why don't we just try this and see how this works? And I'm really excited to see how it works. So everybody, please welcome Mike Stellium7 there on YouTube. Mike, always a pleasure to have you back. Always a pleasure to have you here on the Iron <laughs> Realm. Welcome. Thank you for inviting me back. It's a pleasure to be here again. Feels like just yesterday. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's fun to fun to uh, be able to to talk with you as well, Campbell. I, you, you know, I've been trolling your your comment sections during your live streams now for I think it's a month or two. A um, bunch of <clears throat> bunch of people on my channel are like, "You should check out Autodidactic and what he's up to." You guys would uh, would connect well. Um, mm. and, but I had already seen things that you had done, you know, in the past. And, uh, if I'm not missing, were, were you on Globusters as well? Have you been on there? No, I, I, I no. don't I have been on okay. Globusters. No, no, I couldn't, I couldn't remember, but I've, I've definitely seen, uh, stuff, but also mo most recently things that you've done with, is it Bernie? Is that his name? Oh, yeah. 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 Bernie. Yeah. I saw, yeah. um, a longer one that you he was demonstrating all kinds of stuff with uh, electromagnetics, and that was a very interesting episode. So, yeah, it's fun to yeah, yeah, cross paths yeah. with you. And, and Yeah, sorry about that. I'm, I am notoriously hard to get hold of and pin down, but <laughs> I have seen your comments. So, and I will definitely have to hook up and, and you know, maybe get you on the on the Bernie stream. Ooh, I'd love to. Good. Yeah, it's fun. Mm. Perfect. So, yeah, now I don't even see. Again, another, this is exactly guy. why. Excellent. Go ahead, Walt. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, I'm sorry. I'm choking. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say this is exactly coffee wrong. why we don't want to uh, get all the good conversation out at the beginning because we hit these awesome dead spots. Maybe because it's great. Now, how do we pick that back up and it not be mm -hmm. awkward? And it's all ready. Oh, well, we can awkward. go back exactly where we were. I was... Oh. Since there was a topic we had going right before the call, man, this water isn't even helping. It's I, just, that's, hang on. And I do believe everybody should have power. So, uh, power, power, good thing. Campbell, good would you thing. mind bringing that, uh, the shot of that map back up that you had laid out for us that we were 
just kind of eyeballing and talking about? That one? Can you say that? That's, That's the, one. the one. There it is. So this is Terra Infinite, Nos Confundan, the infinite plane. And this is Earth. Or, and th this is not a scientific representation, by the way, guys. <laughs> Yeah. Where, where, where does this come from? Yeah. I know, I know. Who was uh, um, last? I think the guy who, who 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 wrote the book drew the map as well. I'm not yeah. sure what the name is, but there is a book that goes along I'm with trying it. Trying to find my copy of the book. I may have left it in the other room. Mm -hmm. Actually, I ordered it like probably a day after Bob sent us a copy of this map. He had suggested the book in one of our chats, maybe, or when we were hanging out on a stream i'm not sure but he said it was really an interesting read and it's always been one of my things as well like you were saying about trying to figure out okay well if it's not spinny balls up there then what the hell is it because something's going on with these other people that i encounter or that's me anyway mm. so trying to figure out where are they coming from mm. well that, that was one of the big things of the civilizations with... all of that yeah 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 um, i love with... that the flat earth and, and you know we, we i think we all felt it you know when we lost our our, our extraterrestrials it's like oh my god <laughs> that was supposed to be the go. answer right right <laughs> and, and, but, but then we us. got stuck with this thing of of so what are they and a lot of people just tried to say oh well it's just all you know made up but there was just too much evidence you know that out there that there was definitely something going on and so yeah we, that we started going well where are these extraterrestrials you know and it's in the world right? it's in the, in the fucking name exactly more and, land yeah and even <laughs> alien just means someone from another land as well yeah. so um yeah that's the thing it, and in this map this is mars so is mars sideways instead of up is, is what you know and you can even lay the whole idea is. of the the you know other constellations the other uh you know wandering stars all right sorry i hit my mic and knocked it away the wandering stars and things uh you know literally being the sons of other lands yes um i think i have a graphic for that yeah. okay I have to like pop in on this a little bit with the, 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 <laughs> please, please. Okay, I'll leave the okay. up for a bit, and Kemi. <laughs> that's what I will say that like with Stellium's work and the matching up and that that is my thing with the um what do you call it? The bio um geography. Mm. And bio geology. But, thank you, thank you. And I'm bad, I'm tongue twisted, but that to me, what you're doing is so important, Stellium, because it feels I mean it touches reality to me. It does not feel like fantasy, even though it sounds too crazy to be true but you're proving it in other words you're methodically making your points on this this when you're doing it i've noticed that when people do these maps they feel like complete complete nonsense and fantasy to me and everybody gets their own opinion but as soon as you're putting those different planets and making them um like on um the map where you're saying the outer rings are the suns huh. of the other planets and that what you guys yeah, are yeah. doing is is you're taking the ball model of the planets going out instead of straight up over us when you do flat earth and you in reality flatten the map you also keep everything between the tropics so they are on top stacked in the when they had to convert it to a ball they made it that it was going out that was part of the ball illusion so to me when you guys are doing this you're taking and crisscrossing your models which is really easy to do it's not and learning it so when you're saying the old moon and this is where we're seeing we're out you're mixing the heliocentric model that has them going out with the flat earth model but not we, necessarily if but you we throw observed in them the whole between, martin kinney thing no the martin that, kinney thing no the martin kinney thing did not correct it because again these well, days between the traffic when he no. made the christmas tree I mean, he did he put them overhead during the christmas time that's where the christmas tree comes from the lights okay, all but assembling they never, in the tree of life but they, but they never ever go out there over in other words they're not in the helio model do you understand that they work themselves to an outward thing so they would be further out on the flat earth I'm going to be for for stuff like this. I'm going to be too um, stuck in my. You have to touch reality or touch base. And like, like, where did all of these islands come from, or where when they're doing the ponds out there and doing these worlds? Are somebody dreaming them? Is there any history that points to it? Well, actually, well, actually, no, I have a little article from 1907. Yeah, they just said Help this wasn't out. scientific at all, Cammy. This all. is just okay. a picture. 
Okay, so it's fantasy, so we're doing a fan. Okay, there so were okay, all the so disclaimers were right there. Posted okay, dis disclaimers are is is that we're not in reality world. We are in. No, it's uh, just basically it's entertainment. Oh, it's entertainment oh, uh, at this point. Yeah, it is projection okay. based on information oh, from the book. Okay, where I just like I like I I love entertainment and I love reality. I just don't like people mixing them. <laughs> I can't open it. I can't. And open that's my it. that's my. Um, yeah, no, that's fine. We, yeah. we, we may have to kick me off but, the show tonight, and that's fine. I might have to listen. <laughs> oh yeah. Josh knows how to mute me. To, to okay. my I, I I won't. I won't. <laughs> yeah, I can come on. I won't. Um, I actually so, won't get too upset. We have here an article I'll just speak from, my mind. A, uh, from a Hawaiian mm -hmm. newspaper from 1907, and in mm -hmm. this story, it talks about a guy who went to a Japanese temple in the mountains of Japan for some healing. His brother was dying. He went there for healing. And while he was there for healing, this map was found. This map in a thousand-year-old, it was said to be a thousand-year-old map drawn and hidden away in this Tibetan temple. Shenanigans. Okay. All right. And I don't I know why this has got you so tweaked, Cammy. My goodness. Not tweaked. I just match up maps a lot. And it's one of the worst maps as far as if you look at the distance, like um, key things that we look at maps, I would call them um, what is your your keystones or your things that you have to match up. Like, for instance, Africa and South America are two hours away in time. People travel by boats, airplanes, and everything. It's a very quick jump and jaunt. Well, and the way so like the seeing where point you're... of it isn't the exactity yeah. of I don't think it's for part navigating from one set to part another. around it hmm. that we're focusing on, you know, all that stuff. It oh, may not a... be okay. exactly how it is, but this was a map that was found. Okay. It can be a map that was found and somebody could have again and had it. I just um I can't it's like hard to take measurements and that it like throws you out of reality. So I have to put yeah, on my. This was I, I have to smoke in. Thousands of years old, okay. you know, found in a Tibetan temple. Have you got any thoughts on the the tropics, Cami? As far as um, the tropics that we've got uh, are the wrong tropics, like Capricorn and Cancer. Um, tell me a context of it of what you mean on um, it. So you know how we're going into the age of Aquarius at the moment, and and the tropics are the horizontals from the cross. So. Um, if that makes sense. So every time you go through an age, the tropics mm -hmm. should change. Um, but we're using tropics from, um, I think, 6,000 years ago or something, age of Taurus or something like that. Are we? Yeah, that's the one that always yeah, threw Yeah, it's me. the Tropic yeah. of Capricorn and Cancer. Yeah, yeah. And even if they were correct, they should be changing right now because we're going through a change of age right now. So I was looking at different things. I have it on my screen. I was looking at the magnetics. That's not a, in other words, I'm matching, I match up with physical realities, not, and um, putting in the things, but I'm not matching. That's not. Um, well, now, Kimmy, you're matching up pieces of maps and stuff, right? No, not I'm like not, physical not reality. You're not like saying, okay, I can prove this by the things around me and the places that I go and the physical around it. Let's hell, let's all just go because this is our mm. physical reality. You're saying, no, I'm, this I'm working is out. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just like trying to. There's work Mars. We go on. Sorry. Well, and that, that's <laughs> sort of what I'm getting at because if you were to write down everything that you understand about the magnetics and where mm -hmm. the other poles are supposed to be and the other land that's mm -hmm. going to naturally be inferred must be there. Mm -hmm. And then somebody else can pick it up and kind of lump all that information in with the stories of this map that was found and was posted in the newspaper and the, the projection that was based on information from a book and just say, well, look, these are people's ideas of what they think might be happening. But again, no offense, there's no way to take it and then match it with the physical reality around us where, hell, let's all go prove that this is the information on these papers then can be matched to the physical reality around us. Right. We were talking Map about how those maps, <laughs> maps were gold, right? Who was that? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, what? Us that before the they are, and there's some really, really good ones in the past, too. There's some that I think are on uh, the older maps. I, I can even tell you, um, like, ones that would match up with um, measurements and things that we take. In other words, I'm just like matching up and doing like little things like we were looking last night, we were talking about the Diamandis Islands in the um, 
up between Alaska and Russia and how you have those two islands that basically touch each other and they're four hours away different in time. And so that to me is a deception on how they do the time zones. Because if you looked at solar noon, like solar noon today on one of them was 1119 and solar noon on the other one was 319, which has them four hours away in time, time wise, but it was still the same solar noon happening at the same time. They were just um, renaming the time zones. In other words, the sun was over a course of the two islands. So it's the way that they, I look at the deceptions and how they're putting the map together and I'm trying to untangle reality. And I don't know any of the answers, but I know something. In other words, you look for key places of reality that too much reality, too much reality has crossed over. Too many things has happened and Mark says that this has to be real. This tap, most of the map is, you know, gold it's looking for and doing it so it's like finding the good maps and finding the good information and separating the good from the bad based on things that exist in reality because we travel them we touch them we do that not that um things that are done too common like that little pathway i talked about between um south right, Africa, right. absolutely or, right. you know, South America and that there's been how well, many well, from the slave traders to anything. There's been too much. Too many oh, well, were slave everything. traders real? Do those boats really exist? There are right, actual well, African-Americans so who have doubts about that fact. I mean, all of this stuff is suspect. Everything is all different. of this stuff could be possibly Every, fucking bullshit. But I agree. The I idea agree, is we're not alone over. here. Period. We've had Jerry oh, on. This panel has to kind of sort of agree from what they've said. There's somebody else here around us, with us, and they're not fucking human. So where are they from? Are they from in the earth and all this outer earth shits of deception? Possibly. Are they from above and the outer shits of deception? Possibly. Possibly. It could all be a fucking deception, and we're just all in a little arcade somewhere plugged into a machine, and in 10 minutes when our quarter expires, we'll go, fuck, that was an awesome game. It could be <laughs> any of that. But it could be. Anything with this idea that this guy I know came up with a few years ago regarding flat earth about this preponderance of evidence in my studies of everything, not just flat earth over the last eight years, but in my life path, I've studied many histories, many mythologies, many places that have been visited, told about, mapped out in many various forms, in many historical, religious, maps, etc. And when you take all that preponderance of evidence and lay it out together, you may not have a geographically correct map, but you have a pretty damn good idea that we're inside a place that we're not really going to easily get out of, and other fuckers are out there, and they can come and go. Now, where that out there is, up, down, dimensional shift, all of the above, it could be any and all of the above. But again, that book, nobody said it was science. It was maps. Nobody said it was science. But here's an article. Here's a map. Here's Martin Kenny's. Here's World Beyond the Poles, that Giovanni whoever guy book from the 50s that talked about this very thing, heading out beyond both poles, not just the southern ring, but heading out beyond the North Pole. Well, how the fuck do you do that? You know, so I don't know. Just, there's a lot of stuff. We're all, lot of stuff. We're and I get excited with, and I get you know worked up too. So I'm gonna hush. We're all, we're all working with limited information <laughs> and we're all just trying to sort of speculate with whatever limited information we mm. have and trying to then fill in the gaps with what best information that we have using our expertise to try to fill in those gaps. I just don't want to see mm. you, Kimmy, uh, discount anybody else because the information from which they're operating. And the gaps that they have to fill in are so completely different because their expertise is different than your expertise. And you just don't see that how the, those gaps are going to line up just yet. I, w I don't want you to think that we would have to mute you. I, mean, I still think you would be open to information just because it may not match perfectly with what you think to be true. That's all I'm saying. I can share a synchronicity if you're interested. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Please. Yeah, so I, earlier today on my channel in the comment threads, I was actually not debating, but discussing this whole concept of maps with one of one of the uh, subscribers. And he was calling David Weiss a shill um, because I posted just a little two and a half well, I mean, three, come on, three minutes. Met, David. <laughs> I, I posted this last night. Yeah. <laughs> right. Sorry. So so it was a two or three minute um video that I posted that was from uh, David's 
podcasts and he was talking about my work like two years ago and I, I ran across it recently and I posted it on the channel again. Um, and it's just a funny clip, but because of that, now I've, I've drawn this fire of people that are like, Oh, he's a shill and they're talking. And so I was, you know, I'm just saying, um, you know, as I understand it, all the maps models have problems uh, and nobody except those hiding the truth know what it is for sure. Uh, it just, it's, it's a great way to sow discord also. So you could put some fake maps out there that are kind of close to reality, but don't match it exactly. And, uh, you know, I don't know anybody who, who has a, a foolproof model that, that works. So, so getting hung up on, on the details of the map, because that was the thing I said, the app also bypass, bypasses the censorship algorithms, helps bring people together you know, if he, he, if he's a shill, then there need to be more like him. Uh, why get hung up on the unknown info and argue about details? So, so that was the synchronicity of this. I was actually having a discussion exactly about this. And then here I am seeing this map that uh, I've seen it around a, a few times, but I, you know, I have no idea where that comes from. The, 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 the rings uh, on just the, the earth, you know, area that's, um, in alignment with Martin Kenny's ideas and, and this old map that, that we just saw from what was it a hundred years ago, Japanese or something. So I don't know. I think it, it's like, they're, they're interesting, but you know, so the, 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 the app is a, is a great way to get people to understand that there's a deeper level of knowledge to all this and nobody has all the answers and we're all looking for them. So, so mm. like, you know, can't we all just be friends and can't we all <laughs> get along here? <laughs> And, and so, so he yeah. says, it's always about the details. For me, if you keep promoting the wrong map and you know it's wrong, you're a shill. Many, yeah. times, many times it has been pointed out to him. And I said, what map should he be promoting in your opinion? Right. So, so is there, a, uh, you know, he says, the correct, uh, there is no correct map as far as I know. So don't promote any. And it's like, well, you got to give somebody, people something to, to chew on that, that and, you know introduce them to other concepts besides like wedge or disc floating in space with other spheres all around it, which is just a mixing of the models, which is what mainstream, you know, algorithms want you to believe is what everyone is discussing. And it's nothing could be further from the truth than that. Mm, I agree. Like we do, I do a podcast, Tartaria Australia, and we pretty much the whole thing is, you know, it's based on, you know, information we have, but we pretty much just go in and just project, you know, what could it be and just throw ideas out there. And, and it's just, you know, it's none of it's necessarily based on anything really, apart from, you know, our concepts. But when we do that, then we, we go back and then we listen to what we said and we start researching and we find all this stuff that, that, that sort of um, validates us. So, you, you know, you can use it that way as well, but the way I look at it is everything's just interesting, right? As soon as you start saying this is right and this is wrong, then you, you put yourself in a hole, um, you know, so as long as everything's just interesting and then as you go along, you'll get more bits and pieces of information that either, you know, make it more true or less true. And It's know, like getting those little approach. downloads from the ether, you know, those ideas that just pop into your head. You just throw them out there. Mm. I've had so many that didn't come to fruition. <laughs> but yeah 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 of course how's this oh, what, what, just as, oh sorry i was just going to say as well if this is a simulation then could all these maps be some kind of bleed through from what is actually out there like are we actually if it's a simulation is our boundary the dome or antarctica but in actual reality is that what's bigger and out there if you know what i mean yeah well, before Camu, I think, was trying to link uh, what I've been doing a bit to that map. And, and I think where you were go going with that, Cami, was this idea of a fractal aspect to, to reality where there's, there's this scalability where we're on one level and then the Titans were another. And then there's maybe a continental size of Titans. And that would be in alignment with, you know, what Roger Spur has been talking about for years with this, you know, 900 mile long dragon in the Sahara that's attacking a fish. Right. Um, so, you know, <laughs> and then there's another channel, I think it's called Niven and he's looking at, you know, another scale where like the, you know, the continents or something. And I've seen 
people zoom out and it looks like, you know, all of North America and it all lo looks like a giant turtle, you know, so that's in alignment with uh, ancient mythologies, you know, the earth being on the back of a turtle. So I, to me, it, it, it just all dovetails and it makes sense. So like you've got the go, gog, I, I never can pronounce it, Goglevamste or something, yeah, you know, yeah, his yeah, ideas yeah. Of, of the Disney Hydroid, map. Yeah. And then you've got the, you've got Iwar Anon with the moon being the reverse. And then you've got a little section of where we are that you can, that actually appears to map out pretty accurately. Uh, that's, you know, that's kind of interesting, but, you know, so all of these things that are, to me, they're, they're ultimately speculation, but, down here, you know, is uh, is where it gets interesting, and that's what we can look at and really know about. I mean, this stuff is fun to speculate on too. Don't you? <laughs> mm, that dragon got. That was the first one I saw that video about the dragon in Africa. That I was. That's what first got me thinking about more land. Like that's when I was thinking, well, the only way that could be possible, if there's any anything there, is there's got to be much bigger. You know, we've got to be a small part of a much bigger area right yeah so, that was I, I that was the first thing i thought when i came mm. across that idea it was it i think i came across it maybe uh around the same time as you know martin kenny was putting out his first videos on on that the subjects that he was talking about uh and then you know syncretism with with santos as well um when he started to kind of make the flip and realize the whole all is a tomb thing actually works really nicely with the ancient cosmology. So, um, yeah, it's, it, it's fascinating. And I, I just, I feel like it in a way it all, it all works. <laughs> Have you seen the maps <laughs> weird. Like animals? Um, yeah, I, I, I haven't got, I've got, I think I've got a couple. You mean beyond the dodo bird? <laughs> there's, there's these old maps I, I lost my whole hard drive like a few weeks ago. i haven't got it recovered yet so i'm a bit low on pictures but i'll show you i've got two. Oh, uh, that stinks man i know right i plugged it in and everything just disappeared one day it was not nice oh. this one's um a person <laughs> that right where's the next one this one you see see how that like it's a, it's it's a line right it's actually mm -hmm, an animal mm -hmm. And, and there's a there's a few of these and and um with animals obviously the last one was a, a person too so you know what are these telling us right what if this is a like a ref, uh, not a reflection but uh i'm trying to think of a word like uh, along the same lines of what they're doing or what's been done for centuries in the sky, making the shapes and the things we recognize so that you can easily remember, okay, the lion area is bam, whatever these countries are. And the lady in the lake area are these, you know, same idea Do you with think the it's constellations like being cancer and being different trade mean, routes and you mean like learning aids. Well, sort of like that. Just the idea of this is what this area is going to be remembered as. You know, like the like I said, it's kind of a reflection of what the constellations are in the sky. But let's use countries or use little land areas. Because I mean, I've seen where you take the, you know, the Mercator side projection that's behind all the news uh, anchors, and you can turn it into a big cat playing with a a ball, kind of. Here, let me find that picture. Hold on. <laughs> really? What? Yeah, one sec. There's bloody cats. They're everywhere, man. And I want to interject here just because on all of this, I haven't been upset. I just, I mean, on the map, I didn't like the map. And should I say I like it? I'm just like opening up a curiosity. Um, I actually have Campbell. I've heard nothing but glowing reviews of your work and everything you did and like this was not your map it wasn't your map i was giving you at that i i didn't think i was picking on you at all no uh, no 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 we i thought i was that. having no, yeah no, we knew that Kim. so with the oh, negatives right. i didn't even i just thought i was discussing <laughs> it and um throwing my opinion in on what works or doesn't as a different opinion you know, <laughs> we all get we all get perfect we get our <sighs> So there's your cat world that you live in. You just think it's the squirrels, guys. Yeah, it's not the squirrels. It's the cats. I live with them. Oh, they God, rule this scary. fucking house. <laughs> does, that mean, does that mean Australia is about to be pushed off? The yeah, you guys the... are getting pushed off the edge of that disc in space. Yep, yep, yep. 
<laughs> Antarctica is the trash can. That's why all the elite go there. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Well, definitely, you know, as we all know with the map idea, you know, nothing we see as a map that is presented as accurate, nothing can be. No, well, I was I mean, watching, um, Campbell, your show, it might have been the other day, you were talking about airships and the restrictions that were put on them in Europe. Yeah, yeah, when you yeah. guys started digging into the law, it that was bizarre, up. wasn't it? Fuck me right. up. Right. Air I, I, traffic laws from the 1720s, man. Air traffic laws from the 1720s. Yeah, there were nice. so many that they had to have traffic laws for them. Yep. This yep. isn't like balloonists, you know, going off for a daily job. This sounds like, you know, you had traffic. Yeah, oh, well, and then it. the explanation is they needed to do it because they didn't want, um, you know, crowds gathering when a balloon was in the sky. You know, because, but 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 then that's just it doesn't make sense because if there were no balloons in the sky, that would only happen. You know, you know what, once a year or something. So, so they kind of tell you it was happening a lot because they had to police it. But then they go, oh no, but it, it didn't actually happen. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's just you know, it's it's like come on, guys. So I mean, the whole steampunk thing, you know, where'd that come from? You know, all this all this tech we get. Um, you know, we we said don't you know. Could only dock up you had to be at 20 miles up or so yeah. now it was saying you could go 20 miles up, but you to fly over the city or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It was, there was certain areas you could go in and certain that were restricted. But um, I think, I think the main thing they were doing was just bringing in so that they could police the air and they could, um, you know, get tabs on movement is what it is. Right. Because the thing is with an airship, it's when you travel, they travel lower and slower, so you can see what's below you. You know, so if, we, if there were, if we were all in airships instead of aeroplanes, then we, we'd have a much sort of better picture of the realm, because literally they had windows and then you could open them, and people would just stand there looking out, you know, from this this view. And and then what happens? Like one one crashes, right? Uh, the first false flag blows up, and then we're not allowed to have them. But how many plane crashes have there been? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was saying this morning on the show. It's just re that was never brought up. How many car crashes, plane crashes, train, everything yeah. has crashed. Yeah. One dirigible wow. goes down and it's time to just end it. Yeah, there was a reason for that. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I've seen um, a couple of people are doing um, airship companies again. Yes, they are starting them up again. Um, it's all, but, now, but the thing is, and this is what they do, right? Now it's all high tech. So now it's all, you need, you need millions and millions of dollars. You can't just be a dude in the shed, you know, which is yeah. how it all started. And yeah. they love to do that. They do, and then they put all these safety specs and laws. So even if you could do it, they go, oh, well, it's not compliant. So if you take it out, we're going to arrest you and all this kind of crap. And it's just all um, how, they, how they guard it all. But I also saw this, there's this a channel called Jared Boosters, who's really good, guys. Go check him out. Um, and he was... Um, reading this oh, yeah. um, book from the early 1800s talking about all these cigar-shaped UFOs that were floating around that people yes, were seeing. Sir. And a cigar-shaped UFO is a pretty interesting description of a shape, isn't it? Sounds a lot like an airship, really. And I've always hated that whole explanation of, well, that's the only thing they could come up with to, to say that's what it looked like. Oh, because people are idiots, I guess. Just call them Monica Lewinsky's, I think. <laughs> Sometimes but there a cigar are shaped actual, UFO is just a cigar shaped UFO. Just that. But yeah, there's some great old like drawings, wood cuttings, etc., of those very things. The cigar shaped craft in the fucking sky there. Mm. Literally. Hey Josh, I've tried every way I can to get your attention. Rock band, sir. What, what, what? Did you ever get into the whole UFO phenomena, Mike? Well, I was always interested in the whole alien thing when I was younger. Um, all the sci-fi movies and all that. Which, but, which um, one comes to mind the most? What's the movie that you always go back to 
when you think about space and other planets and beings uh, it's just it's a bit of I everything had. i mean i mean the biggest impression w- until the matrix came along was probably star wars when i, I think mm-hmm. 74 i was like eight and my grandmother took me to to see it in the theater and uh you know, it was like before Star Wars and after Star Wars, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know? and uh, yeah, but um, then then once uh, I started to <clears throat> question Earth shape and realized that NASA was full of bull, <laughs> I, um, I, I just abandoned that. I thought it was all a psyop because I, I had also read William Cooper, like 30 years ago, and he was talking about them prepping us with an alien hoax, you know, three decades ago. So, uh, so mm-hmm. I figured, okay, that makes perfect sense that the, you know, all of that would be just Hollywood illusion. So I threw it all out and I just thought that's all fake. And then, and then, uh, you know, as I started to ponder things more and more, I realized, well, no, there could be outer realms. There could be, you know, underground. There was already lots of stuff coming out, you know, that people were, finding all these catacombs and different, uh, you know, videos were being made about all the stuff that's under the ground. Now we, now we know the deeper you go, the f- more far out it gets, you know? Um, mm. so it's, um, it's, you know, been a journey. So now I'm, and then also you've got the whole other dimensions and psychedelics are definitely, a an access to other realms. Um, and then I imagine there's all kinds of, ways to do it on the natch too if you're able to but um so other alien beings i'm sure there's all kinds of them and maybe they're all around us and we don't perceive them because our sense senses are not attuned to that mm. there's actually a lens you can get that people are showing on tiktok i don't know if it's real or not but they show it and they put it in front of a camera and you know all these ufos appear in the sky and is that the dicyanine? Is it di dicyanine? Th- that sounds familiar. It could be that. Yeah, it's supposed to sort of let you see into Ghost a different lens. spectrum. Idea. Yeah. Mm. Is that the Jaime Mausen, the, the the Spanish or the Mexican researcher? I'm sure, doing like two cameras times. side by side, and mm-hmm. like you know, I mean, he no, this, this is actually he some it didn't look fake at all. I just had a piece of this. You know, perspex looking stuff and they're putting it in front of the camera just like that oh and really like, i didn't know yeah 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 and then it was supposed to sort of you know change the light or whatever and then right, right. see sort of things that you can't normally see but in vietnam as well they were doing it they gave this um troop whatever they're called red goggles and they thought it would give them you know for, to help their night vision and, they, and half of them ended up going crazy because they all started seeing demons yeah i heard um the uh, the officers weren't allowed to even put them on and look through them. They were mm. told never to do that. They were giving them to the chopper gunners, and all of a sudden they said they'd just start shooting out the plane. Mm. The chopper yeah. had and there's nothing there. Yeah, other choppers and stuff. Just he said there's demons everywhere. Yeah, crazy mm. story. Revive attracts your tribe. <laughs> I think it was <laughs> to where all That's night vision good, Mike, turned green after that. No more red night vision. I think that was it. It went from it was in the far infrared spectrum. It was mm-hmm. seeing too far into the infrared, and they well, moved yeah. everything is now near infrared, and then into our light spectrum. You don't really get anything beyond near infrared anymore. No, isn't That's it interesting when you see paper, the book, which is the edge of the spectrum right so. and then also that whole red uh red mercury idea that yeah, could, could not be mercury. right right <laughs> vampire blood uh-huh that it, stuff's cool it, it doesn't have a reflection in the mirror yeah like well or is that just <laughs> a clever trick that josh figured out <laughs> 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 you figured it out yeah, I'd have to play with that Thank stuff you. before Thank I believe you. any of that. Illusions totally. are, you know, they've been doing it for a long time. It's Holy easy to do. Oh, have man. you seen someone putting out videos on TikTok and they they get on Google Earth over Antarctica and they go, look at this, and they zoom in 
and then they go to street view and then you, you can just see they, they just cut it and put yeah. a different video in yeah, and then they're, they're like showing like somewhere in Spain. They go, look at this, there's <laughs> forests everywhere. <laughs> uh, well, I know was, that's the sad part. Yeah. With some of that AI stuff that's happening, I know you and Dave talked about that this morning a bit. Yeah. That yeah, man, there's so it's going to be so hard to discern with your eyes anymore. I mean, that's what they've been doing to us is trying to make these eyes useless. But with that, my God, so yeah, well, I have yeah. I mean, I mentioned it with David when we were talking off uh, the air. He came popping the call as we were leaving the call earlier this morning or yesterday, uh, Tuesday morning, but talking about the uh, photo forensics app to throw some of these uh, you know these AI generated pictures at it and see what it does and see if that's still going to be a viable way to you yeah, know right. to know what that the hell we're that, looking at that's a very interesting idea yeah mm. I want I want to try and put some names in specific names like Napoleon or you know Benjamin Franklin oh, just boy. I got see one what happens sh- I because I got one to show you brother hey go because uh, Dave was saying he reckons it's somehow connecting to consciousness because because when he's putting uh, in like the words for right. a picture, oh, he says it often comes something. up with the picture that he's seeing in his mind. Uh, hang on, let me get to it. Which um, is freaky. Closed it. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. I've, I got about three of these that I play with consistently. Oh, man, I don't know yet. <sighs> I don't think it's consciousness. Uh, um, just no. based on the algorithms and the different ways that it's run, I, I don't believe that it's connecting to a consciousness. You don't think it's reading Dave's brain, no? Um, I'll say this much. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's that's how. I, uh, I yeah, this is how you do it. Ah. Okay, so you can put in on this one, this particular one. It's Night Cafe. Uh, it's free beta. You can get in. You just got to email them. If you put in a picture and an art style, you get something like what you oh, see here. Okay. But if you text random shit, you get crazy stuff. Like one day, Josh and I, you know, talking about his rabbit, talking about quantum and how he jumps around fast. Quantum bunny. And this is the image it gave me. Wow. Well, we had Jerry on a few times and, you know, this was an awesome picture. But I, for chits and giggles, put the words demon hunter in and got this thing back. No image to generate it from. I just said, hey, what's a demon hunter look like? And this is what it gave me. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So you typed hunter in? Oh, I did, yeah. I did. Yeah, I've done I some did. really cool stuff with... Um, yeah, Josh has got some crazy ones he's done with, with text prompts. Tartarian? Show them. Yeah, Tartarian ones. Show them. Hang on. I'll, I'll is it hunting them. demons or is it a demon hunter? A hunting? demon hunter. Right, that's it. That's what it probably interpreted it in. <laughs> as. Oh, I can't. But man, they're pretty crazy. They're pretty crazy. Yeah, I watched that that stream with uh, Dave. It was uh, amazing the artwork that was coming up. It's just mm. like, whoa, <laughs> crazy. And the one picture they share, like, because I it came up in my um, news feed on my uh, yeah. Google phone. Yeah, that really gross. Yeah. Yeah, they kept showing me. What, they said it was the last human selfies. Yeah, and it was yeah, a it bunch was... of horrible scenes in the background and like this human that was like just on the verge of dying, like face falling off, all kinds of crazy ones. It was it weird. Was uh, Those are the ones they share. There's all these gorgeous yeah. ones you can create, but let's show huh. them this. And there's, there's just, so yeah. many different variables. Well, it's really is, hard to. So, so, is it all algorithms? How does it do it so complexly? And how does it, you know, how does it understand that the sky is up and and other things are down and that you know cities go the right way? You know, there's so, like you said, there's so many complexities that we take for granted, paint a picture. But I mean, when you think about that, I mean, there's so much information behind that. Like, how does it do it? I, I mean, I'm not a computer guy but obviously but so mid journey is the one that everybody's been freaking out over lately um and it does some pretty good work i i am s- such a absolute anti fan of discord i hate discord so much that and it, because <laughs> i have to use discord to make the ai images i've done it a couple times and just said 
Psh, it's dumb. I could probably <laughs> I could probably go through and watch videos and learn how to do it. It would be all right, but it's fucking Discord, so I don't. You but, can't just do it on a website. You have to do it on Discord. Uh, for Mid Journey, for Mid Journey, it is based on Discord. Yeah. That's where it exists. You have to go through mm-hmm. and you have to pay attention to the feed. There's so many people putting in prompt quests. You have to go like try to figure out the right time to go back and check or you'll miss it in the big flood of shit. It's pretty crazy. Right. But the one I had up, it's a little like it maybe it's not as robust as far as the actual. And it could be if you get crazy with the prompts again, Josh has come up with some really nuts one with like Tartaria giants, uh, geysers from below the earth, just crazy props and some really crazy images. It was like, I really like the thumbnail you made today. That was that's awesome. Yeah, that yeah. was. Yeah, I want to get a copy of that picture. Me, that was that was nice. <laughs> Surely, I'll send it right now. I'll drop it. Hang on, I'll send it to you on Skype. That'll be easier. And because, well, I use Night Cafe too. Night Cafe is one of the easier ones. There's many variables. You can, there's a simple version, and you you can click the advanced options and run the advanced options, which really aren't that advanced. And they're not great. Yeah, it's it's still pretty mid level. So, um, I will drop into link. I dropped a night cafe link. If you'll drop a mid journey one, I don't have it. I don't have the mid journey. I want to drop the the one (laughs) that if you can learn to run it, it's really cool and it can produce some pretty fun stuff, but it gets a little crazy, a little bit complicated, but it's still a lot of fun. Um, Night cafe. I found to be the easiest that produces the best results whereupon you can actually choose which format that you want it to create in. So if you're creating it in 16 by nine, it's going to generally get real close to hitting thumbnail size every time. And there's not a whole lot of other ones you can really do that with. They'll, they'll limit it to small square boxes, but they've got AI out there that will yeah. enhance it. It, it. It'll enhance it from this little five twelve nothing to a full high def you know, three thousand by three thousand. Yeah, David's picture. hanging it on his wall now. Uh, so, <laughs> and, and that's where the trick comes. If you can learn yeah, how to start combining so these, that way, uh, absolutely. It's it gets every, really cool. Every one of these paintings appears to be really a three D painting because, as Dave was showing, it yeah. gives you like four options, and they're like zoomed in from a different angle. So it's not just two dimensional. It's so it's creating a little world, and then it's giving you a to you know a 2d snapshot of it if you have a favorite artist you can upload their whatever particular style that they do that you like into your like palette when you're trying to transfer one of your pictures and you want to create it into the style of starry night or whatever it is and right we'll yeah say, it'll do a style like it'll i don't do think they have anything. an mc escher style to turn it into well, you can upload all these MC Escher paintings and it creates the style from which to draw from. So now it's actually being able to use that MC Escher style and take whatever picture you want to use that style. And then AI blends them together. It's really crazy. It's again, if you can learn how to start, start running them multiple times with different settings in your algorithms. So it changes it up a little bit here and there. Um, it, it, it really works out well. You get some really cool stuff. I think Walt's showing on the picture. I have them. It's kind of hard to get all my stuff squared away. S- share my screens with you guys and get it all back out. Yeah, hey, I wasn't thinking, was man, getting you all. No, this is right. one that uh, David just shared with me. He made this in that Discord, it said. Uh, let me. Oh, this uh, is Zach. I thought you were sharing, Josh. I thought, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, not bad. No. That's not one that... Dave created is it there's no fucking way I'm pretty let me go check um, I hope it doesn't cut it off uh, discord app net um, DITRH ancient city skyline above the cloud sun setting photo those are the words he used yeah he had a, a few others on that same theme that were beautiful hold on I still think maybe you're not looking at it right what, so what are the chances? Let me, let me um, pull. Let yeah, me pull something. No, dude, right. I drew. This is AI. Remember all the variables, and the AI and all the information from which it gets to draw and drip, pick from. Where would I put it? Oh, hell. 
did you know that that when they went through and they um they were looking at Da Vinci's artwork that it's all they took cuttings you know, like flakes of paint and that it's microns thin. Yeah, I heard you saying that earlier. That's like it was printed. Like it was well, it has to yeah, eggs. It would have to be right because microns. I mean, that's not even one layer of paint, let alone many. <laughs> I also saw what about a couple of years ago. Um, there's more than one. There, there's like they were showing this picture, and it was full of a room full of Mona Lisas, <laughs> like like all kind of slightly different and stuff, but but very similar and from the same age and that. Um, and so we don't even we don't know where any of this art really, you know. It's like the architects, they, they sort of, they get all these buildings and they say, oh, no, it was just this one amazing architect. He'd made them all. Um, and they do the same with artists, don't they? You know, you look back through through history and how many really good artists are there? There's only like a handful. Well, Frank Lloyd Wright, I mean, I know he they have pictures and stuff about him and all this, but that guy designed more houses than it's it's insane when you think about it and all the yeah. books they have on them i now i question that did he really design all of those i mean because they're all intricate and different it's not like he had a general layout mm. he would go Look to different on. cities like hundreds of houses it's just ridiculous mm. to think. it's like music and these bands, you know, like the Beatles, right? I mean, you know, now we know that the deal that they weren't writing all their songs. So it would be just the same thing, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's perhaps they weren't even playing their instruments, according to a drummer or to a uh, spoken to, not spoken to, but heard things from. Some guy claims he played all the drums. Ringo played nothing. Well, I, I've heard that at least, yeah, Ringo is pretty, <laughs> pretty suspect. <you> know? <laughs> right. <laughs> Campbell, and where are you where are you at with the whole big tree thing? Sorry to derail the conversation. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that's no, what we're here um, for. I want to hear I all think, that. I think it looks like we've got evidence, um, you know, that, that there were, yeah, giant trees. And, and, the, and you also go back in into the, the books and they talk about it, um, you know, sort of, um, what are they called, uncanon Bible books, Book of Enoch and that, talk about giant trees, crystalline trees cut down by the fallen angels. Um, and that kind of also would coincide. Titans as well. The Titans, yeah. And that, that would coincide with changing the atmosphere. You know, obviously, be you know, completely change the atmosphere, not as much CO two. They tell us everything was bigger in the past, right? They they just sort of forget to tell us about humans, and they and they, they say, well, reptiles, we'll just call them dinosaurs, but they tell us, you know, dragonflies, two meter wingspan, you know, massive everything. Uh huh. So so they do tell us. So yeah, I think I, yeah, definitely. I don't think I think there's this weird thing going on at the moment, and you've probably seen it where. Some people are saying, well, um, giant trees existed, therefore every single mountain is a giant tree. Or, no, you know, there was a plasma event, so therefore every single mountain is a melted building. Or, what's, right. or, or you know, there were titans, so every oh, single mountain is yeah. a titan. Yeah. And I think anytime you say wrong. anything is all of something, you've like lost me. I got to move yeah. on and get it from exactly. a different angle. Yeah. Absolutism. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Thank you. Exactly. Absolutely. Now, what picture is that, Josh? That's the one I did today. Get out wow, of here. You're a good painter, man. How long that one take? Yeah, he don't fuck around. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, so for some reason, it doesn't want to... I don't know. Let me see if I can't do this. It's going to be really hard. So they're actually scrolling through. I picked four of them that I did uh, through these little AI things today that revolved around... Um, Looking down on giants, or oh, or or I something think to that effect. Was talking about different perspectives, yeah. Yeah, I was trying to combine the airships and stone giants and like biogeology, and trying to get it all together. So when yeah. I saw like mountains with the cell shapes and the stuff like that that you're saying Dave did today, that really struck me as odd because. I was 99% sure that's the one I did just done. Uh, but maybe but I was, how, I, there's no way I can come and grab it from your computer. Did you share it? 
Yeah, I shared it in Skype. Oh, then maybe that's one. I don't know. It said D I T R H on there. I don't. That's so weird. That is weird. I, I don't know. You know, and then it gave total right? different descriptions. I mean, it says right what he put in there. Just well, another question right. that I've got, Mike. Um, all the stones, right? These heart stones. What? What? Um, organ. Oh, or, or organ stones. Is that what you call them? How do they get out of the bodies? Yeah, that was a conundrum for me for for a while. Um, a lot of people were like, you know, did, was there some kind of a massive ritual and the the organs were removed and that made no sense. And I was also finding them across all scale. So from really tiny on up, the same pattern reoccurring. Um, so clearly they weren't like removing the organs from little birds and rats or, you know, smaller animals. So um, mm-hmm. I, I, I was like, oh, it doesn't make sense to me, but the, somehow the body is being destroyed. And initially I didn't, I didn't understand uh, how that could come about. Uh, and it was in the course of talking to a friend of mine, Nathan, um, that the, the penny dropped for me. Um, and I call it boiled egg theory. So basically if you boil an egg, you know, initially, if you crack open the shell, it's going to be liquid inside. And if you boil it for six to 10 minutes, depending on the heat and how long you boil it for, it gets harder and harder and harder. And so I thought, well, maybe something like that is happening with these organs that, that, um, you know, if there's intense heat involved, then maybe that's something that, um, you know, could, could be bringing this about in some way, possibly electricity, I was looking into um, all kinds of different things with regards to petrification. There's an example of a high tension wire hitting trees and petrifying right. not, not just the trunk, but the root structure as well. So I was wow. thinking, well, if that, if that happened to a body, uh, what would, oh yeah, there's, that's the one that uh, Dave, Dave right. did earlier. Yeah. That's where um, we got confused. I think that. Yeah, that's the one, Dave. Showed. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. City in the Sky one. I don't know how I got that picture. Well, you know, here. with the heart, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. All right, go ahead. With the heart thing and the idea that, I, you know, as soon as you introduced this on our show, Mike, it blew my brain because I looked down on my desk and there's a heart stone. Go outside in the dirt, and there's a heart stone. I'm digging up bricks and there's a heart stone. It's like, okay, what the hell, you know? And so, what the hell? Now we yeah. go back to the heart and how, you know, that guy, I can't remember his name, the doctor who unraveled it. Okay. Broke my brain. Then it's a wasp. Yeah. They, are you, are you familiar with that? Uh, Campbell, the, the heart being a band, myocardioventricular band. Have you heard of that? Band. Like instead of a bunch of chambers, like we were told in school, it's literally yeah. a huge long muscle wrapped around itself into a Mobius strip. And that's the other part that oh, my fucking brain. This is, this is easier to show than. Yeah, just show that. it to him real quick. It's a few seconds. Could be it's more worth more it. It's worth it. Because I think this speaks a lot to how these hearts are still everywhere. And then you talk about during the uh, 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 cremation of someone's pet. The heart was left, and that's been mentioned in warriors being burned on pyres, that oh, all that was left is the heart. Morticians talk about in cremation, the heart is okay. freaking almost impossible to burn away. So it is such a uh, crazy thing, a muscle we can't even understand. At this so the, this is looking from the top down. He's got his finger in the aorta and the, the vena cava, and then this is a space that's um, created because the fibers are starting to pull apart. And this is from the side. And these <clears throat> these lines here, you can see these fibers, but but this is a suture line. And uh, so he, this this medical doctor, discovered that if he boiled the hearts and he carefully removed the outer fat, that he could actually start to uh, unravel them just using his fingers. Oh um, and it and it opens up into that's that's the doctor. I don't have. Um, it opens up into what is known as the um, myocardial ventricular band. And um, oh. this is, this is it here. You can see, and, and he, uh, he dissected thousands of, of hearts before he, he was able to figure this out. And uh, yeah, it's, it's incredibly fascinating, but the, the, um, <clears throat> the heart itself, this is a little gruesome, but the heart uh, you know, if you, if you think about the fat that it's in, 
And then this chamber that the heart sits in, lungs have been removed from this picture. Um, that is also a very thick layer of fat. So if you think of the organs floating in here, this is an outer layer of fat. And then the heart itself has what's known as the pericardium, which is this outer fascial layer and, and, and fatty. Uh, <clears throat> and it's the thickest of all the organs. So uh, like Josh, I think it was Josh that was saying before, um, you know, morticians find that the heart is the, the part that survives the most when it's burned. And um, let's see, I had a, yeah, the heart is the densest muscle. This is a comment on my channel. That's why it's so prolific. Even with a cremated body, the only thing that isn't uh, gone is, uh, isn't ash is the heart. And then uh, I had another guy comment on my channel who had um, created a pyre for his deceased um, dog, his companion. And uh, this thing burned for like 36 hours. And the only thing that was left at the end was the heart. And it was sitting there. He, he, he um, you know, washed away the ashes wow. and, and the heart was remaining. So, so this, is, this is, this is, these are all things that I found out after I, 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 the boiled egg theory was that somehow the outer portions of the body were being destroyed while the, the, the organs were hardening. And then because they hardened enough, they remained after the fact. And then maybe there was some kind of mineral exchange that happened after the fact that mm -hmm. completed them as a rock or maybe whatever the event was as it's destroying the outer portions of the body. That was enough to, uh, let me change the picture because that's kind of gross. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> so this was, this was the uh, in initial rock that got me on the, the subject. Um, Before you get too far into it, Mike. Yeah. Do you have that video? of what an organ looks like with no blood left in it yeah where do i have that let's see. I, I knew so, that would do that that oh blew gosh. my mind that just yeah. blew my mind that so yeah so that was that was, that was another there's been a bunch of puzzling things that i haven't been able to answer but i haven't thrown out the empirical evidence just because i didn't know why the empirical evidence was there and that was definitely true when it came to these um the the, um, the fact that a lot of these stones are bone white. And I'm like, why? Some of them are pink, some of them are red, but some are bone white. And I didn't understand why. And now I'm trying to find that video, which I thought I had here. And I don't. I'm sorry. That's Do you right. just find heart? Oh, here it is. Here Do it you is. find livers and other organs as well? No, I find, I find them. I find all the organs, but the, the problem is that the, the uh, other organs are very, they're not so descript and the heart is the hardiest of them. So and it, uh, it's the, um, in my opinion, the it's the most, the most, most likely to, do you hear the sound when I play this? No. Do you hear the sound there? No. Not. Did you click check the box to say share yeah. system sound? Or Do share? I have to stop sharing and then reshare? Yeah, yeah. stop no, share. No. And before oh. you reshare, there should be some boxes to the bottom left of the share screen when you first hit share and it'll be audio and optimize. Yeah. Right. Got it. Okay. Um, this was, this was pretty cool because I can't remember where, where I came across this, but this concept of decellularization. I didn't know it existed until And so the beauty of perfusion decellularization is we start with all that architecture intact and more importantly that all the blood vessels, all the vasculature... Sorry, I skipped the beginning, but basically they're growing organs now. And so they, they're somehow creating a matrix. I, I don't know what they're, if they're using stem cells or what, and then they're growing these. And uh, But the blood isn't there, obviously, so just watch. It's still intact. So when we introduce cells back into that organ, they will already have a natural supply and be able to be fed with, you know, oxygen and nutrients. And we don't have to worry about trying to establish that supply and be able to be fed with, you know, oxygen and nutrients. And we don't have to worry about trying to establish supply. Yeah, so it's bone white when, when the, the blood is, that, is removed. <laughs> is that because it's just cartilage? Is that, or? It's, right? it's, well, the heart doesn't have cartilage, but it's, it's, um, it's fascia. Uh, you know, oh, okay. if, if you think about fascia, you've got the pericardium, which is the fatty outer sac, which is mm. like fascia, but it's very yeah. thick. Um, and then um, let me show you. Um, That's bizarre. You know, so the, I mean, so the hearts, the hearts can be bone, bone white, right? 
So this is that this is that suture line. That's the that's the interventricular sulcus where the the heart fibers meet. Um, and, because it's uh, all wound up in a bowl, basically. Yeah. So that you know they were always dissecting uh -huh. it in different ways, and it took this guy you know to to discover the the mm -hmm. truth about the actual structure. And it's it's uh, that was just the very beginning uh, of his, there it is, the of his discoveries. So this we're is talking looking, to, oh, this sorry, is looking at the bottom. That's okay. Go ahead. Well, this morning we were talking about this very idea of the strange wrapping of this muscle creating that double vortex, reversing one way and the other uh, for the blood flow, and applying yeah. that to wrapping of wires to create different types of electromagnetic things. Anyway, I'm sidetracking you guys. But there, when I saw that image, there it is. There's the different directional wrap and that toroidal yeah. field that it creates and that freaking Mobius strip. It's mind blowing. So the way this guy came across this and, and started to understand it was, was um, he was studying um, cardiology at the University of Salamanca here in Spain. And he had a problem uh, with this whole idea that the, the little heart here is pumping blood to 60,000 miles of blood vessels, you know, because this is fractal in nature. So it's breaking down to smaller and smaller and smaller blood vessels. And... Um, you know, so how is it pushing this highly viscous blood through ever narrowing tubes with, with resistance and, and just on a little pump, it's getting blood to every cell in the body. And then it's, it's not, you know, in, in the mainstream model, it's just relaxing. And then the veins uh, are returning the blood to the heart and, and walking helps a bit because the veins also have uh, valves, <laughs> valves in them that keep the blood from going backwards, you know, but what do you do if you're seated and, you know, you're in a wheelchair all the time, you're never walking. So the blood is somehow getting back to the heart. And he, he just, uh, you know, had a real problem with the, this whole idea that, uh, that, that it was a pump. And, um, so that was, that was what led him on that, that journey. And in the course of dissecting, you know, thousands of hearts over many years, he finally, uh, figured out how to uh, unravel them, and uh, yeah, it's a it's a fascinating story. That's just bizarre. Oh, I was going to pull up here. I'll get you the, um, the videos. Here's it. This is so fascinating because the way it's vortexing, and that also takes you back years and years ago to Dan Winter's work. Um, that's now finally he was a little bit ahead of his time with the vortex and him thinking that it could not be a pump too. Again, this was um, tying some really old work right in here. Yeah, and there's the Mobius strip in this picture right there. It shows right, the, the little the twist, twist right there in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, um, I think that may be my contribution. I haven't Greetings found that anywhere else. Um, well, it's awesome because it's there without a doubt. Yeah, because um, I'll show you in a video here. This is this kind of repeat for people who were here with, uh, but dude, it's so mind blowing. It's almost like, you know, playing a guitar or learning a new skill It's something you need to keep on and work with because it's, there's a lot to it and it's so outside the norm. It takes a couple of times before yeah. it starts to sink yeah, yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. So this is the, the cardiologist and, um, Basically, what he discovered, and you can see it coiled up here, is that when when you look at the heart fibers and the way they twist, and it's basically rolled up like a knot, it's a rope. And um, so he uh, that was the first part. And, and you can see here when the heart is is contracting, it's it's got this spiral twisting to it. And this is the 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 standard model, which it's this four chamber pump, um, but that's not really how how it's functioning. And um, and he he not only figured out the anatomy, but he also figured out that it was actually pumping in this in this spiral fashion. There you can see you can get a taste of why it would, because here you can see the as the, the this is a cross section looking down. Right. You can see there's a spiral to the fibers, and um, <clears throat> that's him giving a lecture talking about this the discovery this is an amazing documentary by the way uh it's called the helical heart 
this this is from my video called helical hearts petrified organs and synchronicities where i talk about here we go here here he, he's he's gonna dissect it or another gonna explain a little bit about the structure first so Now that is a real human heart, correct? I'm not sure if it's human. This might be cow. It might be um, pig. So, so basically, he's able to like dissect it. it, you know, just bluntly. Yeah, there's three. Some are there's three chamber hearts, um, also, but um, mammals are four chambers. And so here, as he opens it, this last little bit here, you'll see. Yeah. The loop. There's there's a little half twist there, right in the very center of it. There he untwisted it. So if you take a if you you know how a Mobius strip works, Campbell. If you if you have a, just a flat piece of paper and you loop it around, you have a loop. But if you give it a half twist, you end up with a a one sided um, three dimensional object. You just made infinity. That's what you did, right? <laughs> Here I'll show you in a, this. See Fibonacci in there. Sorry. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking, Zach, when they were looking down on that one muscle that looked like a hurricane or a quote unquote galaxy or a ear of uh, cauliflower or whatever. The Mobius trip. Roger Spur was in my comment section today and he was asking, oh, Are you a flat earther? Oh shit. <laughs> Be careful. You'll you'll lose Roger forever. <laughs> oh, I, I may I may have I, I, I lost Roger a long time. A long time ago. I feel you. I love Roger though. He's something else, man. He's he's getting it done. But um why did I bring that up? Because um just the energy, the vortex, the way it makes that blood pump. Oh yeah, no, I uh, might once. What the I hell? actually have yeah. the comments here. What was it? Hold on, let me just pull them up. We can read them here. Um Uh, yeah, I, I posted this little short video the other day, biogeology, walk and talk, limestone or lime bone. Yeah, I watched that it's one. Just, it's just like three minutes long, and it's just this section of the mountain that I was showing some of these reoccurring themes that I've documented in the videos. And he said, 100% agree, blood vessels and vein blood, all biology. And I was like, and bone, you know, because that is the title of the, <clears throat> of the video, and plasma. And then he, uh, he says, bones uh, do not do well in hot, salty waters. Bones turn to stones of all types, depending on local chemistry. And, and I said, well, perhaps true regarding smaller creatures, but this is an example of Titan bone, in my opinion. And then I said, see parts four and six of unveiling a Titan for numerous examples of histological comparisons. Uh, and then he says, I hope you're not a flat <laughs> It's like, glad you asked. Mostly I identify as a toroid earther, and my pronouns are uh, just yeah, kidding. That's awesome. <laughs> Seriously, though, this is a little bit long, but I think it might be worth reading. Um, my pronouns seri are. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, I'm fine. Uh, I'm fine admitting I don't know what the earth shape is. I'm open to a variety of possibilities. Toroid is my best guess. Perhaps even some sort of cymatic utterance of the God Godhead. I don't know. I'm okay with the possibility of never really knowing for certain. Empirically, though, it certainly measures flat. Modern optics, infrared, prove that we see too far based on spherical geometry of a ball the size, they tell us. There appears to be no detectable motion or discernible curvature, and I've yet to hear a good explanation for gas pressure existing adjacent to a vacuum without a containment barrier. So yes, I'm definitely a globe skeptic, and much of that skepticism has been fueled by NASA's blatant hoaxery. Uh, they've been proven time and again as a bunch of liars. I'd like to know if you still consider NASA to be a credible organization. Uh, also, apropos Earth shape, in several of your videos, you've made it clear that you despise flat earthers and have even accused them of ruining your life's work. Yet regarding Earth shape, I have long wondered, this is another synchronicity because we were talking about this earlier. I've long wondered, how could that 900 mile long dragon along with his big fish friend possibly live on a 24,901 mile circumference spinning ball. I've never been able to get those ideas to work together. I do find your work on the dragon very interesting though. I think it supports something other than a spinning water ball, but that's just my opinion. Uh, as I've said many times in interviews and videos, your work was one of the things that led to the penny drop for me with Mont Go. 
One last question. I haven't question, I haven't watched any of your videos about the dragon for a while, and I'm wondering if any boots on the ground evidence has actually been gathered in support of the hypothesis. You didn't answer that one though. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder why. So yeah. Um well done. Anyway. Well said. Um yeah, I know. So I don't know. I felt like, I mean, he's never we... given my channel the 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 uh, He's he's mentioned it in passing, but he's never talked about the Hearthstone research. In fact, he came up with a really cheesy Hearthstone video just a week or two ago. Makes no mention of of uh, the work that I did. This is just all talking about vortexing and Victor Schauberger, and then it gets back to this is what I wanted to show you here, proving the the spiral contraction nature of of the heart. They blew it up with with a gas, I think, nitrogen. And then they did CAT scans uh, as they as they blew it up and, and it shrank. And you can see there's two opposite rotating spiral patterns there. Campbell froze, you still there? Oh no, he's just still. <laughs> I am, am I here? Yeah. <laughs> so um so then the question with the boiled egg theory, getting back to your question, Campbell, was um, what about the rest of the body? Where are the arms? Where are the, the legs? Where are the skulls? And um, this conversation I was having with my friend Nathan was when, you know, I told him about boiled egg theory. And then he asked me, hey, have you ever, um, have you ever made bone broth? And, and I, I hadn't ever done that. And... Uh, because I'm a vegetarian, I have been my whole life. Um, and he, um, he told me that basically when you, when you cook bone in crock pots, that within a few hours, it, it turns to sponge. And then if you keep going, it turns to a gel. So this was another um, form of um, uh, imaging that they did. And, and it's hard to tell in this video, but basically, what they can see is that there's a, a spiraling vo vortex of the blood flow. Um, so that was another confirmation of, of what he was, what he was um, hypothesizing, but they proved it beyond a shadow of doubt with uh, positronic emission, which is here. So, I mean, it's just when you see these um, pictures of the, where is it? <clears throat> you know, stuff like this. Or, um, or this. The strongest electromagnetic field, apparently, in the body is, is the heart. Absolutely. And, um, and so... It's powerful. Yeah. So that, that ties into to vortexes, which ties, you know, into this, this whole understanding that it seems like everything are vortexes. So there's that, you can kind of make out the twist there. This is speeded up, but you get the idea. So the, the, in this video, I tie this back into to this work that I've done on the, the, um, the heart stones. <clears throat> because at that point there in this video where he's, um, Come on. Where'd it go? Ah. There. Basically, he's, he's showing that, that line. And that was when I realized that a bunch of the stones that I'd already gathered had not only the, the harp shape that I'd been documenting and, and showing, but also uh, these lines in, in the right places as well. So that's what that's what this video is about. And uh, have, have you cut any of your stones in half? Or... Yeah. <laughs> Funny, you, Funny should you should ask. ask. <laughs> <laughs> you owe me a coat, Michael. <laughs> Jinx, one, two, three. Yeah, if you go to my channel here. Uh... No my channel no that's not what i want to do 
Yeah, you're worse than me, man. I think I'm with, the, say, with the open man. tabs, with the open tabs. To, he's, got, he's, got, he's got eleven YouTube tabs. <laughs> no, but you don't play. I was, I was What's the that? champ. I thought of having too many tabs open, but Mike can put a run for my money. Oh yeah. God, is that? <laughs> <laughs> I got no. There's these are these are the things that I. I Thought I'm, about showing. I'm, I'm what am I? What am I doing here? Here, uh, my the cutting. Is... They're cutting them open. No, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to go. I'm trying to go to my channel. Sorry. It's... <laughs> I'm so bad. I use more than one search engine. I literally have like different. Search <laughs> engines. And they all have ten tabs on them. <laughs> right. Yeah. So we're all pretty good at it. I think. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. Here we go. So uh, to answer your question. Um, this is, I'll just go, really quickly, this this was the first video I did on the subject of the Heartstones because I, I was frustrated by the fact that there were so many claims being made that didn't have a whole lot of substantiation behind <laughs> them. And and I ended up finding that that rock. There were, there this one stone has 25 different anatomical correlations. Then I went out and I filmed uh, looking for others because I I figured if, if this is actually something that's possible, then then it should be repeatable. Then I started finding a bunch of them. Then I did this video called Petrified Organs, Giant's Hearts and How to Spot Them because I was finding them on all different scales. And this is with a lot of anatomical specificity, um, many of these stones. Then I, then I went back out and uh, went in and live in, in the river bottom, found a number of these stones and broke them open. And that, that's when it gets really, really far out because uh, some of them are basically bloody inside oh. um you can see the the remains of of chambers i believe that's the the yeah. papillary muscle there um it's not showing my here's another one so they're totally bone white on the outside until you break some of them open and then they've got they've got chambers and and in that first video um that i did right um the broken hearts telltale ones that um you can see a lot of that oh no this in the first video i did you can you can see these different features this is the one i was showing you with guasps work um then uh i went out live and and gathered like 15 of them in the course of 10 minutes and um you know line them all up and and then after the fact as i was editing the video there's a whole bunch of other ones that i didn't spot that were pointing in different directions. So I point those out. Um, so yeah, it yeah. almost becomes like ridiculous when you really look down and start looking for them. It's like, well, they can't really be, come on, Mike. It can't be everywhere. And, and why wouldn't they, they are here in Louisiana? I know that. Of course they would. I mean, I'm not sure I necessarily am convinced that the heart doesn't get burned up in an incinerator. Um, I, I would think that it would, that that's, it would still get burned up at the, temperatures when you're using it to incinerate a body i mean that's sort of the temperature you need it at to make sure that goes you get, do get teeth and bone chips and stuff i think but for the most part all the yeah stuff i i don't away. i don't know that it's just heat it might be but, electromagnetic and in, in nature right uh, i do believe plasma that it's I, I was reading I, I was reading articles on plasma vitrification and plasma petrification earlier that um so, you know, these, these are these sulcus lines. Um, the most specific of the, the features is that, that I've found is this one, which is uh, in, in a number of them, where because of that spiral vortexing twisting, as you look at them from the bottom, the, you can see the, in, in the, the stones that um, a number of them are um, twisting just like that. It looks like a propeller. Um, yeah, so I so I think the outer portions of the body are being destroyed, as are the bones and the um, the um, you know the skull as well. I don't find very many. I, I find almost no uh, brains. So I think um, there's there's evidence of vitrified brains, and they look like they melt like glass. So basically, in my theories, fat, ligament, tendon, fascia blood plasma they're all they're all made from long, long chain fatty acids they're all crystalline in nature and so i believe that they all petrify in varying ways in crystal crystal form so if energy um, isn't 
created and energy isn't destroyed and you're left with this mobius strip those are the there's the blood vessels on the top it, it's a it's a theme that reoccurs so frequently sorry i interrupted you no you're fine yeah and that mobius strip and everything is so dense that it, it doesn't putrefy the way the way everything else does it's going to be the one thing that is left behind if you maybe don't burn it. If you just leave nature to be nature, as things die and rot, the only thing that is left is the heart. And eventually, because that energy is stored in that Mobius strip, it's going to help cause and help help with the actual fossilization and uh, crystallization of all that minerals in there. I don't yeah, know. That, tw- that twisting of it. Yeah, it makes it even tougher. Yep. Um, and hold yeah, the energy. So that 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 was cow. This is elephant. Whoa. Now look at the difference between elephant and giraffe. Very very different shape. Mm. So you know, and this this is this is pig, I believe, or it might be it might be human. One of these is pig, and one is human. I can't remember which is which is which. So these this is the atrium here, and this is also an atrium. And I I believe these are like flaps. You know, when you see him dice dissecting it and you see some of these other photos uh i think oftentimes those are being destroyed and that's why you end up with this harp shape which is the it's the it's the most distinct of the shapes it's also the easiest to spot because almost all the other rocks are going to be little ovals or they're going to be round or they're going to be disc shaped like kidneys or spleens or you know lymph nodes or uh, you know, there's uh, there's so much with with like the stones that that are formed in the body, cysts, fatty cysts that could petrify. You've got um, you've got gall gallstones gall and kidney stones. They're already stone. And I mean, check check this out. Wait a minute. I've got, uh, two, 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 let me find this. It's under. I wanted to point out while you're looking at this that, um, again, everything either petrifies or petrifies. Petrification takes case um, or takes place in a lot of things. What it is is it's crystallization. When something petrifies, it crystallizes in place or, in other words, the elements in that. And that's usually a very still environment, meaning not windy or water, again, is your catalyst to a lot of this. You say plasma and electricity, but water is one of the biggest catalysts at all fluids, um, slurries to um, crystallizations. And when things crystallize in place, it's, again... Um, Underwater, you can see it happening. Going to a river, you go by it. Like I go down to my river, down my yard, and you can find tree roots fossilizing where the trees are very much alive. The roots are already fossilizing in place where they're dipping into the river. This is a common occurrence. Um, With these and the hearts and the way that they're made, um, again, the coherency of how they're put together, and that might, again, help them fold in like a fluid thing to fossilize it would make sense when you're looking at even the way that they're wrapped in the intensity trying to think of the right word um to put with it but it is it would make more sense again on um having that type of density and organization that's like tightly knit together hold together like through it not be disturbed um because a lot of the putrefaction is pretty much being disturbed why it's changing over if that makes sense that it breaks down it doesn't now it might crystallize but you're not going to see it in place you wouldn't call it a petrified remain well also you know i suppose it's possible that um you know when it comes to bodies things like intestines could also petrify with their contents right so then then you're going to have mass if we're talking about titans you're going to have massive areas of stone that Mm -hmm. just make no sense whatsoever because it's like you know, stuff that's in the process of being digested. Exactly. And you take something, the different history stories like the Great Flood into account and put this stuff underwater. If you can have pockets of it that stay still enough and are not tumultuous, um, you're going to have a lot of petrification or fossilization going on. It's the way it works unless it's disturbed. Again, you break down, you either putrefy or you petrify. Take a look at this. So, so you can see the outer folds of the brain are, have been preserved and you can see the crystalline nature crystalline where it's, nature, where it's exactly. broken away here, but here it's just kind of 
melted. It's lost its form, mm -hmm. right? Um, this is this is uh, the, the corpus callosum where the two halves of the brain meet. This is where the majority of the blood flow in the brain is right here. And um, so you can you can see, you know, where it's being connected. This is from from one side looking out. And um, this is this is uh, said to be vitrified brain. And, uh, you know, there's all kinds of different sizes and shapes of brains and there's different lobes of brains. So I think one of the reasons that, that you're not finding them complete is because they're either melting or it's just a fragment or it's changed form like Cami, you know, was talking about. Um, so maybe, you know, some of these things, these geodes are, are actually, you know, gall kidney stones or uh, bladders or, you know, they could, there's a lot of things that they could be. This is showing the blood flow. And we have to remember if, if we are speaking about Titans and things like that, that one of their kidney stones or a gallstone could be like a nine, 10 inch geode. Right. Yeah. That's, uh, that was a, a picture I was going to show in a second, but these are, these are kidney stones or, and, um, and then these are, uh, I think these are, I can't remember which, these are stones also that are produced in the body. They can be huge in a human body. They can be, I mean, this is like, what, three, three, three centimeters wide. This is a gall, this is a gall bladder filled with these stones. Um, there's another picture that's just really leaves an impression when you see it of, um, you know, so, you know, if you think about all the stones that are on the beaches of the world and in the rivers and, and you know, trapped in the mud, um, you know, if these are gigantic creatures, I mean, these are these are kidney are these these are geodes. Right. And then these are kidney stones or gallstones. <laughs> this is agate. Now, this may be Pete's pieces of broken, fragmented, petrified tree also. Um, and these are sketchings of, of different kinds of kidney and bladder stones. So yeah, there's uh, this is why I call it biogeology, because I think ultimately, except for things like volcanoes, cinders, cinder cones, and um, you know what may be slag heaps from ancient miners, I think uh, most of what we see out there is biological in origin. Uh, and in different different scales. That's just amazing. And yeah, then you think about all the different amazing. types of animals and what their organs, they have somewhat different shapes. So yeah, I mean, I think Cami shared this with me. This is a this is a bloodwood tree. Whoa. You know, imagine that petrified, what kind of material are you going to get? This hmm. subject, you know, it's so, it's so fascinating when you, when you start to consider these things on a really big scale. Now the residents, the residents will a lot of the times petrify into the ambers, especially in that we know, like in the Baltic areas, um, people were asking about the salt waters and the different waters. Yeah, the different waters mm. are going to cause different reactions as things crystallize. You're going to wind up with different materials or different impurities, different colorations, different personalities. Um, our minerals have different personalities based on location a lot, um, the colorations, the shape that they grow, the, again, the everything um, that went into them comes out of them and you change out the recipe, you get a little bit of a different um, end product. So it's just- Yeah, so there's gonna be this never ending variation of how mm -hmm. it can manifest, yes. but there's gonna be certain forms that are gonna be very apparent and repeat themselves over and over again. Campbell, are you familiar with the, the channel Hangman1128? You're muted. You're muted. Campbell, you're, you're, <laughs> you're muted, muted on the big up, screen. Campbell. 
<laughs> you're doing a cami. You were moving yeah. on the big screen. Hello. Yeah. I, hey. I, I knew All right. That. I, that was part of my act. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think I have. Yeah. I, I'm a mime part time. You see. <laughs> um, I think I've heard of that channel, but I I, I don't recall what it is. So we is we're looking at a big tree. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. There we go. I've got. I've saw. I saw the um the video where the guy was walking around the mountain. Did you see that? And he was just pulling off bits of you know stone, but it was basically like it was just big branches and bits of tree. Just was the mountain. <laughs> it was right. ridiculous. Yeah, there's he hangman has found areas that are like not completely petrified and petrified. So it's undeniable that it's wood. Um, yeah, and, and maybe, he'll be looking at decomposing him. logs. And you'll pull up a little piece like this, and then behind him is an identical piece, but it's like you know 50 yards wide, and uh, and and it's you know the same the same thing. Is he you a know? YouTuber or is he on Instagram? No, he's on YouTube. Yeah, oh, okay. he's um, he's well, definitely worth Instagram. checking out. Right. He's he's got Hang the man. best footage on the trees I've I've seen by far. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. And I, then there's that video by. Um, Oh, I think I have it right here, actually. This Who is, is it? Uh, Hangman what? Hangman. Hangman 1128. This is yeah, this Zach, is an interesting Zach video told also. Us about him. Oh, I love Mr. BBB. Yeah. 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 So this guy is showing these oh. trees in Madagascar, or these 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 um it's so, what look like stumps in Madagascar. And it, um it's so funny a, how much Mr. BBB three two three dances around flat earth but won't get there. He shows so much <laughs> stuff like this that's like right at the edge, guy. Come on, come over here with us. But he's got a big channel. Uh, he always lose. got a huge channel. I wouldn't yeah. mess it up if I was him. Go ahead, go ahead. I've yeah, I've invited no, this, him numerous times to talk about anything but flat earth and he's yeah, just not so responding. <laughs> he's he Madagascar, but you can see whoop, no, I'm going too fast. You can see it's got these look like, you know, it's like, what is it? Uh, I can't remember f fir tree or, or yes. you know what? Yeah. And, and it, and it, uh, these are like each one of these is like the size of the empire state building. So that, you know, the, the branch structures, everything is, everything is there and it's branching out from these circular, what appear to be trunks and there's a bunch of them. So to me, it, it's like between hangman all the no for forests on earth stuff and you know this sort of thing there's so much evidence for the the stumps um you know and and the i mean the avatar of like trees it's it just uh to me it's it's very compelling mm. um you know i mean you, when he the thing the thing he does also in his videos it's so cool is he shows uh, all the different ways in which the sap manifests as well because i was talking about petrification before uh of plasma and and uh mm -hmm. ligament and tendon and all of those go to um let's see um where is it? Stop. you know this is the composition of blood and the the yellow there is your your long chain fatty acids and i can't find here we go um this is the composition here and like all of all of these are made of the same thing so i believe that that's what is petrifying to crystal uh, okay. In different ways, and so if you look at plasma under a microscope, and you compare that to this, it's very similar structures. Um, but the, the the point I was going to make is this: is that if you remove all the water from it, this is from human plasma; it's crystalline. When you when you break it down, and mainstream ge mainstream geology also tells us that um, limestone is um, is made of bone. Sorry, wow. I'm, do I'm dominating the conversation. What about what about bauxite? Do you You're freaking our brain, Michael. Don't worry about it. <laughs> do you guys get like bauxite over there? Like we get 
like it's iron basically like these little like pebbles like orange pebbles and and they're just like everywhere in australia they like they're just everywhere but they're Box. all perfectly they, these no. little round iron balls you know they're not you know no, not at all of iron i mean i'm just wondering if are they some kind of blood cell some or kind of organic material maybe the blood mm because he just yeah just yeah. um trying to get back to my browser yes. where is it there show it some is. time campbell show us books all right um oh i was just going to look at a book site bau yeah oh with oh bau the bau yeah that that's kind of it all those little pebbles that's it in concrete i think oh what the hell like that looks like an and is that only in australia we just have it everywhere because Australia is like red. Like that's why it's red. It's that's covered just, in this stuff. There's something happened there, man. I mean, what the hell? That's just crazy. I've never seen that anywhere around me. And I've been in a few different states here in the States. And everywhere I go, I look at rocks. So I would have looked. Mm. Oh, wow. I've seen um, people come up and do their concrete wash it sort of like that making it look like that it. right with yeah. rocks added river to rock things. or yeah. creek rock yeah, yeah. tumbled but not naturally occurring no. right mm. and we do this is, we do this get is, the little so round blood, ones by themselves and then we get big clumps of it as well so when blood is exposed to garlic it clumps into little round globules just throw that out there blood yeah when blood if you expose wow. blood to garlic i know this because i'll break open a garlic capsule and put it on just about anything as a healing methodology if it's handy <laughs> and i don't have something else so i put garlic gel on blood i don't want to cut and watch the blood separate into little balls and thought well that's an interesting effect that kind of might explain why vampires don't like garlic it fucks the blood up that way when it's exposed directly and not absorbed correctly yeah. i guess but must be that, acid. that blood a while ago it was mm -hmm. like hmm giant your, vampires anyone your box site is fabulous i'm reading a little bit of the text on it it's aluminum or aluminium i like the way you say it better i like and, that <laughs> aluminium I, I love that we're aluminum here in america but aluminium um <laughs> across the pond and i definitely prefer the across the pond pronunciation and gallium yeah. this is these are fabulous aluminum aluminum or aluminum <laughs> i have to go back to aluminum now because aluminum. I'm, I'm, i like yours better <laughs> I'm right. i like yours better the combo plate because <laughs> i'm american but no the aluminum <laughs> um you already know all of the electronics and different things you can use to it but um gallium and gall gallium is a big one in the energy market. We import all of ours in in this country, and it's used on circuit boards and has got a lot of um, in electronics and that. It's this is this is fabulous. This is like such a functional rock. Uh, the um, properties that are engaged together, mixed in to this rock again, um, circuitry. Um, the type of again the way that they it would conduct and do energy uh, i could i could now i'm looking at it for the first time because um let's face it in my business even though i did the tech side of my business nobody ever had a piece of this in a ring and had me test it so it did not cross my desk <laughs> but i am familiar with gallium and um, we used to uh yag um, yttrium aluminum we produce, we synthesize YAG, which is yttrium, aluminum, and gallium in a garnet and that making it and for the properties you get, which are fabulous. So I've um, seen some different uses of synthesis and um, forgive me because I am, I am a reader, not an orator. Yeah, I'm the person that used to have, <laughs> yeah, I'm the person that always geeked out on books. And I am, when you read a lot, you invent a lot of your own um, pronunciations. <laughs> Yeah, do you know what I'm, do you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. You can listen to listen to Jason from Archaics. It's kind of funny sometimes because he's just he's just book taught, and half the words like he says, but he just says them in a different way than we would say them because he's never heard them spoken. He's only ever read them, 
That is the, no, I, I, I appreciate, I love it when I listen to people and I hear that because I can tell that they're reading and they're putting it together. And if Mm. you're saying that there's a heavy appreciation to reading and taking in your information and the way that you digest getting it that way. I um, also function probably best on that, which makes me really boring as a YouTuber that people want to see everything in videos Um, because I'm making the pictures in my mind. (laughs) Let's put, Uh let's put it that way. (laughs) <laughs> but just this, do this and they'll end up on the screen but the box side i appreciate because i'm keeping it open on a tab just because i again all of the different useful um properties of something mixed together in a little slab is pretty remarkable mm. i'm going to have to go to school on that one so there you Cam, go. I, I have a question radio, so. um uh, Campbell, you mentioned Archaics, and I've been churning through a ton of his content since I discovered him about a month ago. I've probably heard a hundred hours of him now, um, and it's it's pretty remarkable. I was in one of his live streams the other day, and I asked the question, um, you know, if there was any association between the Phoenix event and and petrification, and he said uh, yes, that um, flash freezing. And then basically infiltration of, of high mineral content waters could also could also cause it. And I was I wanted to ask Cami what she thought of this. So if you think of <clears throat> the cellular structure, when when we freeze water, it expands. So if there was a tissue with all kinds of different cells, and then you froze it, that would break the cell walls, and then you wouldn't have this defined cellular structure any longer and then that would be infiltrated by the waters below you know the high mineral content waters submarines bounce off of so there's so many different um um ways to petrify you can petrify with heat you can petrify with light you can petrify with with mineral high you know high mineral content waters like mother shipton's cave uh lake natron um, and, and, um, but also plasma appears to do it as well. So, so uh, the fluids, you're looking at the all fluids, of the above, once again, we're, right. You know, we like, were, we were on top of Crowder's mountain earlier this week. We climbed it with Ted and Karen and Zach and, um, that's where that picture was from. And when we were at the top of it, it's a very misty because of where it sits and is sitting in the clouds. It's a very kind of quiet, misty place that you're hanging out in the clouds there. And there were a lot of trees in progress what you were saying that I was telling them you or they looked like rocks they look like rocks but I'm like here tap here this is still wood over here Zach you were there um it was stuff in progress he's on permamute um but it's happening anytime you have again the moisture the elements in that your difference what I want you to think of is going to ice and going to snow and a lot of your biggest stuff is your amor- amorphous versus crystalline or just putting it like this organized versus unorganized you have your gases which are most unorganized your liquids which are fairly more unorganized now your amorphous stuff so you're freezing your ice cube is kind of like freezing a liquid that is your organization and that is your energy you're going to get from it as far as properties and qualities is it's going to have the same pretty much properties as your liquid state of it um if you looked at it that way but you have another state of it that is where it freezes slowly in its own time and it's allowed to crystallize freely and that of course is snow so if you look at it ice cube that is when you're doing your petrification and looking at your ruins and that a lot of this information you can gather is how quickly it cooled or changed states it did not snow stayed in the state long enough where it was able to crystallize fully crystallize and that is what a snowflake is you have organization you have lattice structure you have perfection to it ice if you force it to freeze under your conditions you have nothing it takes the shape of the mold it freezes into it and the it, the lattice structure, if you took the inside, there is no structure to it. It's like having the liquid state of it. So lava, for instance, would be where it cooled quickly and it did not organize. Basalt pillars where they organize into your um, hexagonal pillars in that means that it stayed in an state long enough to organize and crystallize into these crystalline shapes. And again, a lot of your stuff being rough granite like going on the ground versus a pretty basalt pillar and that is is the um 
condition of the atmosphere is it moving in, in other words for something to crystallize out do this you need kind of a still area where it's not getting moved and into it so you need a little bit of stillness going along along with the temperature change along with the um things going on you'll know too if a storm if it gets cold too quickly and erratic you'll get pelted with hail which is again you're unorganized you need those conditions to exist for the crystallization to take place if it changes state from one to another and does not do it in its own like perfect time, you're going to wind up with lava or an ice cube or glass, you know, what they call your natural glass. Um, any of your obsidians, that just means that it changed state from one to the other without fully, without getting to grow because crystals grow. They will perfectly organize themselves as they grow. And again, I'll watch people, I'll play with um, people all day long. It's um, just like you watch cell divides in humans to grow um, crystals. They grow additive. You can watch it happening in real time under a microscope, or you can, again, even put a string into sugar water and watch how it will make out of liquid. It will crystallize perfectly alum. Aluminium. Grow, um, if you go and get it at the drugstore, you'll get perfect crystals out of this growing it at home. Um, bismuth, again, if you can make the conditions right, you can get the perfect geometry. If the mm. conditions aren't right, you're going to get the more slurried out and the mixtures of them. Yeah, mm. wow, that's so <clears throat> interesting. So it's almost was, like an osmosis kind of thing. Yes. Like, 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 yeah, 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 cool. Yeah, it, it grows out of If you haven't ever seen crystals grow, um, Campbell, it's something that infuriates me that they don't teach in school because they've known always I'll hop you over a video that will kind of help you along because it's something they know and intentionally disguise and I know they intentionally disguise that why like kids get to grow the things if you look at some of the adult growing kits they're actually giving you molds and things to pour into the mold to make the crystal shape and it's like no that's not crystallization that's amorphous that's completely to teach people that that's how these things get into these perfect sacred geometries is a sin. Nature does it just like nature makes your perfect by spiral and plants and makes your perfect people. It makes your perfect crystals under perfect conditions, or if not like your granite and that, if you look at granite under a microscope, you'll see their little tiny perfect crystals of feldspar, mica, and quartz with some different things mixed in to get your colorations. Um, but your crystallization is like perfection in granite um mm. it's not just tinning it up or blasting it with electricity you have to have the conditions for the crystals to grow and they'll use the elements that are present now your elements obviously aren't in solid state at the time so as they're putrefying or whatever they are growing out of and your elements that are present like in your heart or in your plants like your trees your elements there because they're not disturbed it's using those elements along with the water to do a little bit of your natural um alchemy on that's what it's going to grow it's going to use what's available and if it's not disturbed it can do it in place um mm -hmm. like again on a misty mountain type with the tree that's just constantly in a mist um again it's not that you're not going to petrify something by drying it out it's not dehydrated at all it's crystallized the conditions are right that the elements as they start to putrefy they instead grow perfect crystals but mm -hmm. that elements are right there in place for it to do it with it's um it's i have it's a little story beautiful. to tell on that note because uh, um i was in the north of sweden <clears throat> walking across a uh, frozen lake and uh it was 20 below at the time and the the snowflakes were falling and they landed on my girlfriend's shoulder and i and i i looked over and it was the first time i'd ever seen a snowflake like a real like like the cartoon snowflake you know the perfect the perfect shape um and i and i didn't realize that they actually formed individually like that and then i learned after the fact that they have a whole life cycle that they go through sorry for the <laughs> noise um you know and they're they're actually living and they're growing um and then when they stop growing that's the end of their life cycle and i suppose right. they all clump together in these bigger snowflakes um but that's more like the putrefication that you were describing. And that brings right. me back to this, this concept of, mm. of the, the fourth stage of water. Are you, are you all familiar with that? Mm -hmm. You know, you've got, go again. Solid, you've, got yeah. you've got solid, you've, you've got, got liquid gas. and you've got gas, right? But recently a fourth phase of water has been uh, right. identified. 
And this is the, the water that is, it, like if you think of chia seeds, if you've ever soaked them and they absorb yeah, yeah. like six times their weight in water, that's structured water. <clears throat> and this, all, all of the, um, the uh, mucous membranes throughout the body are the, all the slimy parts of the inside of the body, they're all, they're all covered in this, this structured water. And um, so structured water, if I'm understanding it correctly, would just be um, it's a liquid that's starting to arrange itself, basically, again, align its growth rates in an organized pattern, because that's what it is, which would be crystalline. Mm -hmm. So it, it, yeah. in other words, just oh like you have God. the other way, that's just taking it back the other right, way. Right, absolutely. And yes, you, you would have that, you, that would make perfect sense. Yeah, so if we get back to this that I was going to show. Uh, Please. Um, you know, the, if you think about the viscosity, how is the blood moving through? You know, we talked about the heart being a Mobius strip, but isn't it interesting, the shape of red blood cells, right? <laughs> so these, these are epithelial cells. This is the surface, uh -huh. which is, this is where your structured water is. So you have the fat, which is, which is uh, hydrophobic, right? It repels water. That's what crystallizes, I believe. Then you have the structured water. Then you have these little toroid shaped red blood cells that are moving <laughs> through the bloodstream. Toroid shape. Hmm, that reminds me of something. What was it? I can't Brilliant. Remember. Yes. Right. So, so my, my thought is that they're literally being pulled in some electromagnetic fashion through the, the bloodstream. And that would account for why uh, it's not having to be pushed out to the cells. They're literally you know yeah, just okay flying. Like something of the heart yeah right yeah and and then i almost think of it as like quantum blocking you've seen the you oh, know the, ma the magnets you know right you know, your blood is ferrite these... you can make a ferrous cell uh, using no, blood baby. you can make a ferrous cell and do this your i your the iron in your blood will take alignments just like a compass aligns to the north and that you can right. your blood will do every what you are saying i can back up with um empirical evidence that what you're saying it's not it's in other words it makes perfect sense if you look at the makeup of blood and again even the work you do on um, i've done with magnetics and blood and that um what you're saying would it would it would be able to organize because it has the iron impurities in the liquid which you would call that but the the iron is going to with the electromagnetics that you have an electrical pump it's going to create its own little pattern um so what you're saying is going to be very organized so Yes, it would it would be organized. People aren't looking at it that way, but that would follow a hundred percent um inferred logic. Mm, why? Like a hundred percent inferred logic if you see how blood works and um you would get the organization in the liquid. You you would you have iron in the liquid. Mm, iron is iron will align itself. It iron <laughs> is ferrite, it will align itself and do this. You can show you can demo yeah. it on a ferro cell you can like when you see ken wheeler yes. and do a ferro cell you can um run blood on the ferro cell and he has i haven't actually tested blood myself um he has but i've looked at a lot of the work with it but you can run make a, a ferro cell actually a thin layer of blood on there and pick up the magnetic readings in it because again it's going to align just like yeah. the nanoparticles of iron do in the ferro fluid that's what blood is is blood is a ferro fluid but it is a ferrofluid, so it's going mm. to be able to align and take organization. Oh, ferrofluid. Wasn't someone using that's, that in batteries or something? That's my quote of that? the night. Blood it's, is it's a, a Yeah, blood, blood <laughs> would be a weaker ferrofluid than like the stuff that you would buy that's going to spike up stuff. In other words, it's a, if you yeah, concentrate the blood enough, it would do it, but it, it has that same... So we're using it in an uh, Ken Wheeler, I think, in an electromagnet uh -huh. or something. Yeah, putting yeah. It yeah. plates. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, it is. It's, I mean, blood is a ferrofluid. There's no oh. two ways about it. You have iron in your blood, which makes it a ferro, which is iron, fluid, yeah. which is oh, liquid. Is just, and yeah. a ferrofluid, definitely. We align, we organize ferrofluids all the time because that's what we use in a ferro cell or anything else when looking oh, at that. Right. We put nanoparticles of iron in a fluid so they're suspended. That's what blood is. We put oh, more that. iron particles in the fluid so we see it a little bit stronger, meaning that um, the blood is just a little bit of a weaker mix, but it's the same, same thing. 
So, so is, is is the more iron in the ferrofluid, does that make it more uh, magnetic? Does that create a bigger magnetic field? Well, the, more or less. Uh, like okay. Percentage. Okay. The ferro. Okay, it's it's iron, so it itself is not a magnet, but it's attracted to a magnet and will line up in a magnetic field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not lodestone. Yeah. Right. It's not lo the lo yeah. lodestone. Is a magnet. Magnetite is not a magnet. The difference between the to between magnetite and lodestone because their properties are going to read out exactly the same on my equipment except for the only thing it's going to be is my lodestone is going to have magnetic properties on its own and my magnetite is not this is no different than if you take a nail and a magnet and you run your magnet over the nail to make it magnetized or your tweezers so you make them magnetized and you turn them into it you columnated and you did it by like rubbing the iron on the way that you columnate or the way that you make magnets. This is just running a, a flow of electricity and it, it lines up where you're like, um, where things are a little bit out of alignment. It will pull them into alignment and make mm. them magnets Pointing themselves. Place, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so yeah, so I mean, that's the same as our body then. So we're, yes. we're literally batteries. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, I mean, they read your heart on an EKG, um, Everything works on electricity in your body, the electrical vortex pump and that it's not any, again, they check to see if you're alive by measuring your electrical impulses. Um, they check most of the stuff by doing it. You can say that we're not, and then anytime you have electricity, what happens when you have electricity, you generate what? A magnetic field. Yeah, yeah, now your yeah, body, cool. if you have iron, it is going to line up and do some pretty yeah. intelligent mm. stuff because whoever created this was way, way, way smarter than me. Yeah. <laughs> Just a bit. So I said the, the, uh, have... the more I look, the more ah. Uh, so the, the more, more iron I... we have in our body, the the, the more uh, the like the stronger our field. Is that right? Um, because that would increase the more I mean, magnet. The more ferrofluid, if we if we think that the more iron is, if that's going to increase it, but the the blood's iron content, which would be our ferrofluid, would that give us a stronger field? Not necessarily, because again, it's how we're attracted to the field. It's an all-in oh, interactive it's, yeah, thing. Yeah, it's not. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. no, it's yeah, a, it's yeah. a, yeah. It's all, it all works together, and it's hard to like pull it apart like that. But it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. You will get the organization, and the organization, and the alignment, like what you're saying, a smart fluid or this fourth state would mm. have to exist, as you're saying, because it will under the organization of our body i'm just like thinking this out as you're doing it but under the organization of our body of course the ferrofluid and the electrofluids it would take on organization more than a liquid naturally would it would have to yeah so if you you know so literally when people are attracted to each other it's literally got to be some kind of um magnetic attraction right like their field Sometimes like the two fields it. are attracted to each other and then that would be to do with m maybe the the iron in, in the blood being attracted to their magnetic field or it's a harmonic resonance there in that em right. field that their or heart's that putting out <clears throat> okay that, yeah 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 heart yeah that makes and i think that that's where you go the more blood you perfect, have it's going to be because you're going to so, be a, a bigger person a bigger person yeah, is going to yeah. have more so guess, blood, but a bigger person is going to have one's a one night stand and one's a long term relationship. <laughs> and and the bigger person is going to have a bigger heart because the bigger heart is going to be needed to facilitate to move the blood, big, not pump field, it per se. But heart is nice. there you go, You're the right. big heart's going to have that bigger field, mm -hmm. just based on size. Mm. So no, I've I got a, just a, a random question I want to ask: What's a thunder egg? What's a what? Hey. Oh, a thunder egg, a dragon thunder egg. egg. Yeah, uh, pull, it, yeah, pull up a picture. <laughs> That's where you get a thunder chicken from, isn't it? <laughs> I have seen a research that again, not something they put a lot of in rings, but let's see if we can take it down and learn what we have here. Ooh, the agate's not. Ooh. Now, these really, if you look at that on the thunder eggs, again, these are geodes that when you cut them open, have fabulous stuff inside. Um, mm. And um, they find them in different specific areas growing together. So again, they're going to point to the fact that the conditions around those areas was causing, again, they had a stillness and they were able to petrify a lot of things um, 
because again, it's a location specific nodule. You're going to find on the thunder eggs looking at it, I see agates, I see quartz. Um, depending on your waters and your impurities, it looks like you're going to get mm -hmm. all kinds of different um, things out of it. Some of these really could have been eggs. Um, looking at one at the top, it looked like it probably could have been an egg that fossilized because you could almost see where the yolk was in the middle at one color. Again, remember if it's still and thanks putrefying into. Um, or a brain. <laughs> that, that like an egg, really the ones that were eggs, you can see that eggs existed. Um, chicken eggs are, you know, different ostrich eggs. You could call them any type of eggs. Not all of these are going to be. You could have um, yeah, that one looks like all kinds of things, but you had a neat area of fossilization where it was able to create all of this crystallization inside and make areas where you can go find them, cut them open. So, so do you think that there's some natural kind of geological formation or, or do you think there, there could be some kind of organ? Like, I mean, obviously you mentioned egg, but... Um, I think you're going to have... It's just the way they grow, you know. They're so hard on the outside and everything's on the inside, you know. See, did that makes it that a lot of them... I mean, I think a lot of them on your heart on the outside and even... Um, the heart on the outside could even be that like once it's finished growing and that you're you're still going to it's going to be epigenic to other stones so okay so your thing has years ago and fossilization by the mm -hmm. way does not take long to happen we were doing yeah, it yeah. in laboratory in two to five days in nature it happens over weeks and years and yeah. decades but not over 100 it doesn't it doesn't take that long it's yeah. happening all around you it's just like the grass is growing all around you Things are fossilizing all around you. You can go and you can feel it and you can touch it. Um, it's part of the natural cycle of life. But once something is fossilized too and you have it, it's still sitting there. It's done. It's used those elements. Now it has more water rushing over it, more elements and rain and that happening. So it's epigenic or going to be host to like this miasma and stuff growing over the top. So it's going to seed it. And these are the round ones that we're getting where it's like seeding it and other stuff growing over the top of it hardening in layers if that makes sense to you but it's uh your hard crust on some of these look like they're more of an after effect over time if that makes sense okay, um, yeah, yeah, because yeah, it can be yeah. yeah crystals are also host to other crystals you can have something and then you'll grow something else over the top of it it will be a seed think of it as a seed and attracting yeah, and okay. Yeah, yeah. That's because the, we, we don't keep it pristine in nature. We don't keep it all brushed off. Once it's quit growing, you have more dirt and stuff coming, more stuff wants to grow. And the conditions, the stuff that grew over your conditions were probably a lot top. uglier and more rushing water. Your ideal conditions are gone. That's bizarre. So rock grows then. Rock basically. grows. Yes. So, I mean, God, God, they give us a bunch of crap at school, don't they? They do. We can. I want you to take the video. <laughs> yes. There's a video that you can watch it under a microscope done in 1958 from um, MIT, and they did it for Bell Laboratories. Called the name of the um, video is Crystals. Type in crystals in 1958 and see if you get an old guy from Bell Laboratory. Okay. This is just like, uh, yeah, YouTube, that's fine. That'll get you there. He'll show you growing them under a microscope. I do it at home, you do it at home, but this will give you, I like it because it's 1958 and it shows you that it's a course in physics at these foundations. Faces ahead through the part that's still You're watching crystals grow. I have a microscope here. I can do it too laying in there, but watch them grow and watch them do the perfect faces. Um, Way better than watching paint peel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is growing in real time under a microscope. You're watching the rock grow and you're watching it again. It will naturally, as it grows like a snowflake, depending on what the things are, it's going to have, depending on the elements, you'll have oh, different my. crystal habit structures and that you'll have it, but it's going to fill out and even try to oh. fill in the other stuff because it naturally wants to become sacred geometry. That's how crystals grow. Mm. That's why, oh, okay. So that's why that there's all these magic stones because it, uh -huh. it doesn't make sense if, if rocks are, are stagnant or not growing. But if they're growing, you can put intention into them. Uh huh. Right, and then the, right. then there's a difference between a crystal growing or a tissue growing, and t and then later petrifying. Like this is something we can witness happening. Right. Right. You're you're 
your things petrifying is, is if you imagine that your elements that he's putting on the slide there, your elements are the right, your elements are correct in where it's growing to create little small crystals of whatever it's fossilizing into and turning the stone. Be a, a, like Bellsbar Mike and that of granite or again, your different things, but he'll, he's got this up. He's doing granite right now, showing that each one of these is its own little crystal, but because the crystals don't, they grow under different habit structures. They run into each other and stop because they can't grow together. They're different materials. So when they're all growing in the same place all together, they can't go further. But your solids, your solids are all crystalline. You might have to magnify it up to do it. All of your metals are crystalline. That's why they have like they can conduct and transmit in that gold, silver and everything. This is all crystalline. It all grows in crystals. It's how just like we grow people in Krant, we, we grow rock too. And the only time we don't grow rock, which is the exception, is when it doesn't have chance to finish growing, that it gets, um, it changes temperature too rapidly to finish. And it's stuck in this, stuck in a liquid state solid. And that would be your natural glasses and your lava and that. But that's not the majority of things. The majority of everything on this, every solid on this earth is crystallized. Yeah. And your obsidian, your glasses, and your lava are your exception, your unorganized mess. And just to, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were sharing, Mike. Go ahead, go ahead. That's all right. I was just going to say that uh, even in mainstream geology, they tell us that limestone is is bone, mm -hmm. uh, which is right. very fascinating because they're giving us a different story, right? They're giving uh -huh. us the Piles hundreds of hundreds of right, millions right, right. of years. <laughs> of, no, uh, it's not that uh, long. You no. Know, yeah, and uh, let's see, where is it? Uh, hold on a second. I've got a better, you know, th this is this is the kind of thing they, where to go? You know, when you're looking at all these layers of sedimentation, um, you know, they're, um, they're talking about hundreds of millions of years and, and that all the dead creatures are getting compressed and then they, they, they press down into these layers. And, um, you know, that's, um, that's partially true in some cases, but in, in some other cases, cases, not at yeah. all. <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, everything is, nothing ever works across the board is what I've, yeah. <laughs> right. So the, that, uh, that thing I brought up before is showing that it, they're saying it's made of, um, skeletal fragments, mollusk, coral, uh, and, and all of that is compressed. And somebody was mocking me on on the channel at one point because they're like well if you just you know looked with your eyes you would see that the, that the limestone that you're claiming is titan bone is actually made of all of these these small shells and mollusks and and, and whatnot and uh i've been hiking around this region for a long time and i never saw anything uh on any of these rocks that looks you didn't that the look micro, that just the macro but you know what it's the same ingredients you just have the macro ingredient right. on the small and that makes mm. perfect sense um again you're not seeing the little bitty stuff except for you will maybe get no. overgrowth on it but, but you're right i've they, seen they your did, work on it it's bigger mm, yeah they, they, they did you you see it in um like the aggregates and stuff and the old world cement and stuff they used to use they you know, you find the snail shells and stuff in there, but that's because it's been mixed up by humans. Right. This is not, and I proved it because I went out with a thousand X microscope and showed that there's no trace of any of those things listed. So this is an, this is limestone. Yep. It's the same chemical composition. Yep. Bone. <laughs> yep. Right. Except not not bone as in living bone, but petrified bone, just like they would tell us the sedimentary layer is made of. Right. And, uh, and so if you go back to bone, this is a femur, you can see the blood is still in this. And then this is, um, you know, this is the blood, more of the blood removed. This is when it's fresh. And this is when all of the blood has been removed, kind of like decellularizing a heart. And then this is what it looks like under a microscope. So here we're getting into the fractal nature of reality again, right? It looks the same under a microscope as it done as it does with the naked eye. I, if you don't mind, Mike, go back one picture for me real quick. One right before this. Ooh, I don't know which order I took them in. That one? No, not that, that one. one. I'm sorry, not that one. That one. <laughs> that that one. one, and then go on one more. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah. That one. Think yeah. about that picture Zach took of the crystal area laying on top of that uh rock that 
kind of like yeah you said it looked like branches laying everywhere well yeah, you know going right, deeper right here, here that looks almost like it yeah holy shit so so this is cortical bone here and this is you know that's the strongest part of the bone obviously um and and it has very little in the way of uh holes going through it for blood vessels so there's very little vascularity and here in the central portion of our long bones and our skull and our pelvis and our spine is where the blood is produced uh in in the body the red blood cells are actually made there and um so isn't it interesting if you if you think about what this is going to be comprised of it's going to be comprised of bone blood and you know plasma there's going to be stem cells as well in there um and when you look at these stones that are that are on and all around the mountain they have these channels going through mm -hmm. them there's mm -hmm. no hint whatsoever of mollusks or shells or and i have you know i have the microscopic proof and and you can see that there's there's iron ore is caked to the outside of it and then these oh, channels wow. will be filled with red <laughs> earth right but this this is clumped in so you have a channel filled with red earth and then iron ore mixed in or caked to the sides and and you can see here there's little tiny lines going all over the place and i believe these are the the micro blood vessels of the you know like the 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 actual where is it? Um, I have a better picture, which I can show what it looks like when it's unbroken. So these, you know, pe bone grows in parallel lines also. You know, if you think about the, um, the sternum, the rib cage, the yeah bone, the structure of bone right structural. so yeah. so here's your cortical bone here's your trabecular bone that's what it's called trabecular and then it's it grows in like rings of a tree these are called osteons and then the blood vessels go through and then you have larger and larger blood vessels going all the way back to the to the heart to the aorta which is the biggest and uh and so the cortical bone is going to break off into layers uh that are thick <laughs> If you th you got to think Titan like a mile tall creature, right? <laughs> right. Um, and then then you'll understand that that you know these these lines here that make up the cortical bone could actually be a couple of feet in in diameter. Uh, and I have some footage of that in the fourth unveiling unveiling a Titan video. Let me get that up real quick just to show it. I'm pretty good at trying to look at stuff from like different size points of view, but this gets really tricky for me. Um, mm -hmm. Seeing, it's amazing how you can see this stuff in the stone. I just, I, my eyes don't work that way. It's weird. Yeah, this is awesome. Well, it didn't all happen overnight. It came over about two years of walking on the mountain and um contemplating <laughs> the the uh, ridiculous so yeah just talking about osteons how they're formed showing what i was showing you here and then I mean, you can see this is this is on where to go there um so this is on top of the mountain and when you look at um there it is yeah this is so spongious bone it, it's like i was showing you microscopically but trabecular bone is the same thing it's just a bigger version of it that's in the long bones but here you know in the skull and this is what it looks like on top so you can see this is much smaller holes up there as compared to to down on the the plateau where those other bigger examples are that I was showing before, like this one, and it's just caked with um, caked with this mm. this iron ore, and and it's just everywhere, and and it's all there. There's your bedrock, right? But that's also I believe cortical bone because look at what's coming out of the top of it. So it's going from being solid to being uh, 
this the Swiss cheese kind of kind of bone. And then I'm going to have a little footage here you'll see from a distance here in a second. There. So you can see these 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 lines. They would say, oh, this is sedimentary layers. Um, but I think that this is, these are the, the, the rows of cortical bone. I don't think I showed this when I was on last time. That no, this, this is, is what, stuff, this is like, this is like two, three feet thick here. And, and it'll have big channels, but no little channels, just like cortical bone. And then you'll see some footage here in a second from there. Let me turn on the sound actually, might be loud. Whoop. It's either going to be the trabecular bone or it's going to be the compact bone. Check this. I wish I had a better zoom, but here you can get a, a sense of just how massive these layers are and how deep they go. You can't really appreciate that when you're looking at, at some of these other areas, but there there's a gouge and some of the layers have fallen off. That's probably guessing from here, probably 10 to 12 feet deep. That, that, uh, that layer of rock. Yeah, so it not it interesting? They're telling us that it's made of bone or that limestone is, is from bone and anatomically, histologically, which is the study of tissue, it lines up perfectly with the creature that, that's the size of, of a Titan, which, um, you know, mm. it's um, fascinating stuff. Indeed, it is. So this one is like almost the size of a car. I've got another one somewhere where you can see a, a chunk is broken off and see if I can find it. And where it's broken off, it, um, it is exposing um, a channel and, and it's got red earth coming out of the channel. So it's not like it was deposited by a flood. You can see that this chunk is recently broken away and the, the, the earth, the red earth is inside. And also in, in my last video on my channel, let's see if I can find that real quick. Can I close this, Cami? Did you want to say something more about that? She maybe muted up. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, she's talking. I'm doing. About I'm doing. I'm doing a cam. It is a cam that you're doing cam. I'm it's sorry. A I was cam talking. Thing. It must be a cam thing. Yeah. It might be a, oh, a cam okay. thing. I was muted. No, I definitely did. I I didn't even know we were going to play it, and I'm sorry. I was talking so much. Um, I apologize. I just got excited and wanted to make sure they had that link. Cool. Um. So this. Oh no, this is the other one. Got another one. Close things. Where is it? It's got to be better ways to find this stuff. Okay, so uh, this is a big chunk of that cortical bone, and um, what I believe is cortical bone. Blood is produced. Whereas the compact bone is the thick outer layer. And um, so this is another, th uh, another way that it manifests. And this just gives even more credence to the theory because uh, here there's a channel going through. And so you've got the, the, the iron ore is caked to it. And then you have a white that is, is uh, it's, it's basically, if you look at the structure of a, of a blood vessel, um, it, it's identical. This is just showing the mac the micro vascularity, and then going around to the other side. There we go. 
Let's just play the sound like that. Blood vessel opening, we'll look at it in a moment from the other side. You can see the quartz mixed in with the iron ore. This has been broken off and it has some growth here. This is, this is like an algae or a moss or, or something, the beginnings of it. That's not part of the stone. Um, but uh, check this out over here. This is cool. You can see this opening here and it's lined. So I've shown this uh, in, in, in a many different um, examples, and it, it's just amazing. You've got the limestone, and then you have the, the quartz lining channels that go through, which are filled with red earth and iron ore. Lined with quartz, so that would be blood vessel, and then the iron ore kicked to the, the outside of it. So the And then you can see the, the vascularity. And then if you look at this one, this is just a, another amazing example of it. So if you get up in a microscope, there's no hints of, of any of those fragmented bones. And all these channels are going off in different directions. They're all perfectly smooth. There are none, none that are partially formed, right? But then they break off into smaller and smaller channels going every which way. So explain to me how that forms by water erosion. Ta -da, that was like three feet. In just means that the soft part of the rock just happened to be perfectly circular tubes that were going all the way through it. So it is, come on. Right. Makes perfect <laughs> sense. I, yeah. I wish I'd thought of that scenario. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, that's the, those the, the geologists already did. <laughs> uh, oh, this is the laying down woman, is it? I don't know. What do you think? Oh, do you think that's oh, the yeah, lady that, at um, Machu Picchu, is it? Yeah, let me let me pull up other titans. That's something I was thinking about because this is one of the things that you know bugs me. This is this is one of the one one of the images that really got me in the beginning. Uh, saw it on a J Dream a J Dreamers yeah. video. And I'm like, wow. And, and is that the one with this, the baby as well? Like two of them? I don't know about no, that I think that one is uh, one. actually been photoshopped. Um, oh, okay. All right. Yeah, a lot of the stuff has been photoshopped. There's a bunch of things I put in my first video that I don't think are elephants that I wouldn't have put in the, the video now, knowing what I know. But so the you know, this this yeah, it's kind of shaped like a creature a bit, but this one is is also fascinating. Um and that some one, people yeah. say it doesn't look that way from the other side, but there's a lot going on there that that I wonder about because the, the above it looks like melt, you know, and uh, uh, I don't know. It it uh, it was fascinating, but then there's a lot of these this kind of thing where you get an arch and people are like, oh, it looks like an elephant. I don't think this looks at all like an elephant, um, and. Uh, that one's a little bit fascinating, but I'd want to see it from a bunch of different angles. Again, I don't think this looks anything like an elephant. So, um, you know, just because there's an arch doesn't mean it's a yeah, trunk. Yeah. You know, people get so like the. Oh, that's a good one. The axe. <laughs> yeah. Paul Bunyan he got yeah. tired one day and it. You know, forgot his axe there. Uh, this is in uh, South Africa, I think, um, and it's also known as uh, elephant's eye. I've I've looked at footage um, inside, and I don't see anatomical features in any of the footage that I've seen. So somebody else would have to go and uh, you know do some boots on the ground investigation there. Um, this is looking very sedimentary, layery. <laughs> So mm. to say to say that that's a creature, you'd need the, some more compelling evidence. The eye looks too um, flat, too vertical. If you know what I mean, it's got not mm -hmm. enough. There's no in. arch to it. There's no yeah, yeah, zygomatic yeah. arch. Or, yeah. It's, yeah, it's very big in relationship to the head, also. So, yeah, yeah, no doubt. You know, you got to look at these with critical eyes very and, much so. and exercise discernment. So this is the one. There's another picture with uh, a baby pointing the other direction at it. And I'm pretty sure I that the baby is Photoshop. Um, 
Yeah, it kind of looks a bit like an elephant. This is fascinating. I mean, to me, this is definitely biogeology I'm seeing here. Yeah, this doesn't yeah. look like mining right. waste. Um, this is, I think, even known as an elephant out you know, mountain, so you can kind of trace the head shape and you know, mm -hmm. I don't think these are elephants at all. <laughs> but that's this one, this one not definitely not. Was, uh, and now the proportions are a bit out, a little bit of a fat leg, hasn't it? Yeah, I think it was that's... the 70s, everybody was wearing bell bottoms then. Come on. <laughs> This is Elephant Island down in Antarctica with the ice wall. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So that one, I definitely would want to get some I would have more, to see more views. More there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. So, so this, you know, people, they get uh, excited about their pet theories. But I think, is this the one you were talking about before, Campbell? Oh no, uh, you were you no, were probably talking no, about No, but I've one. seen this they one before. The one of the that one and the Pichu. one before. Yeah. I've seen that one. Um yeah. at the top of Machu Picchu, the mountain range, it looks like a lady lying down. Yeah, I've seen uh, this right. one as well. Yeah. But no details. This one is really fascinating. Yeah, I have no idea where it is. That, it doesn't right. it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> exactly. look shopped. You know, this is what I've seen. Proportionate this and in the right place. Yeah. So that one really kind of made me go hmm and then seeing roger's stuff and and this was uh, presented like in a big series of just pictures being shown where like here's something you really wonder and then the next one's a really semi silly image like we've been seeing with the paradelia obviously in effect i'm so, pretty yeah. sure this has been photoshopped and this is a frustrating thing because people point at this and they were like oh yeah this is proof of titans and it's like okay maybe a different time of the day with the shadows different it would look totally different from a different yeah. angle, it might look completely different. You gotta, you know, this yeah. is the this is the thing. When I when I got on um, Google Earth initially, because because the Elephant Mountain here that I that I did all the research on was, um, you know, it, from from more than one angle, it looks like an elephant. And uh, and so then I thought, <coughs> okay, well, if there's any anything to it, I'll I'll, um, you know, I'll get on. I we we did this we did this a bunch last time. Um, mm. But uh, just come on, Google Earth is waking up here. Oh, turn off the star for us. Oh, by the way, Thirteenth thir Monkey says hi. He's wondering if you ever made use of his um, his star fort map. He's mapped over ten thousand of them worldwide. This is just a port. A portion of it i don't have the rest of it you know you off. showed this to us when you were here before mike and we were so caught up in the main the brain melting uh, presentation i forgot to ask you where i could get this to add to my google maps we have or, to have to talk to him he's a, he's a little also say sad, is he, sad because people have gotten them and then not uh not uh you know give credit i, I had to. one i got oh off, yeah i would definitely want a couple of years ago and i lost it um when a com or another computer died so i've been looking we should, for a good we should have him on sometime because we definitely he's, should he's got <laughs> we so all many should. insights yeah exactly. there's so <laughs> many people but guys just point them our way please you know it's hard for us to keep up with them all as well so anything what was his name starfort monkey 13th monkey oh 13th monkey yeah so here's a star fort right here. Isn't that a coincidence? Mm -hmm. And also another coincidence is that Greenwich Mean Time goes right through here. So the zero meridian goes right through Montco. <laughs> and then there's this whole, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Notice how the eye opens and closes. So my uh, first. Oh, <laughs> you gotta be fucking kidding me. Didn't I talk? Didn't we talk about this? Well, last you time? told us that they had like showed, like you had old photos that still showed the eye, but now it's hard to see it. They they've right. altered that, but we didn't see the wing. No, I thought yeah. I thought it was an animation you had done for your videos. But you might have had it in watching. your video, and we just watched it and didn't. Yeah, I, yeah. No, I found a way that you can you can scroll really slowly and record in high definition, and so you can actually do these pretty high quality flybys um and so i've got those in like the third and the fourth titan videos um but i'm just going to show th thumbnails here where are they thumbnails hello okay oh anytime you uh 
somebody wants to interject. Okay, so here's, this is um, <laughs> Sibs from Insta uh, helped me. And when I went to go do the second video and he, uh, he started playing around with pictures of Mont Go and then, um, oh, and then he, <laughs> then he photoshopped a little, some ears on there and, and put a tusk on and, and, um, and, and then, um, let's see, let me show. yeah, so, uh, oh, the reason I, I showed that, that picture is because this is actually taken a snapshot of Google earth before it got censored. And I, and you, you used to be able to, um, just go to the video. There you go. Part five. So this is where I show the before and afters of the censorship. Um, so you can see here, you can get away from the mountain and the, and the, the eye is still very much open from a distance. Mm -hmm. And after I did the, 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 for the second video about the eye, um, and then the third video about the ear, which is here, you see this quarter moon right there in the center of the quarter moon is where that cave is with the, with the paintings that we were talking about and the, and the skeletons. So that's uh, the mountain. Uh, it didn't... So then, uh, <laughs> yeah, then I was in a live stream with Rodrigo Ferrari Nunez and, and I went to show him and, and all of this had been blurred out and, and now you get in close and it, it, it disappears. But as soon as you get away and try and get the big picture, it it, uh, it closes up again. So hmm, I'm sure they'll just explain it as some kind of a rendering error. And, and oh, you're That's just a, but, yeah. But when I got on Google Earth that first time, it was just such a mind blow because as I zoomed around, I started tilting. I realized that like, wow, the head is shaped like a head. There's cutouts right here where the neck should be. Uh, spine. You've got you've got these lines where a rib, a rib cage would be on both sides. <laughs> there's a, there's a, am I going too fast for it to, to, uh, mm. it's clear. Yep. Okay. And then right where the legs would be, there's a really deep Canyon that you can actually hike up and go right through there and go up all the way onto the top. So from a macro perspective, that was already about 10 different, uh, coincidences beyond just one view and it looks like an elephant and there was way more to it. And so that was when I started to look into um, like, what about the eye? Cause I'd been, I'd been up at the eye um, a bunch of times and um, found that um, it was a very odd place. Oh, that's what I was going to show. I was going to show one more thing before I stop sharing. Um, so, um, yeah, so there was the censorship, and then this is what uh, I think Walt was talking about, or maybe maybe Josh before. Um, I, I was back up at the the oh, cave yeah. with uh, Andreas Exertis and uh, and and Victor, who who uh, th these are all guys that I um, we had a Discord that got taken down, and uh, there was all kinds of collaboration that was going on, and so we went up. Uh, and I went up to show him all these different channels that were going through the, the cave and in these different places because um, they were matching up with the, the anatomy, the sutures and, and whatnot. This is, this is all covered in the, in the second and the fifth Unveiling a Titan videos. Right. And, and, and there's, you know, so if you look at the, the structure of an eyeball, let me find a... Here, I'll just... Um, play this a little bit because I need to go to the bathroom and get right myself here. something to drink. And it continues down. And so you have this big area here and then you have this blocking it. And then as I come up here, you can go around this structure and then it opens up again down there really big on the other side. So this structure really is kind of like in the center of, of the whole eye area. And if we look at this section here it is kind of um curved like a c-shape and uh i've shown this from the other side but but this whole area that you're seeing here could be the back of the eyeball because 
it's all crystalline in nature, and I'll show you what I mean by that. If you look here, this is all quartz. There's a big, big layer of quartz. Could be like a mile in sheath. Sheath. That's all quartz, 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 quartz. That yellow over there, all right? This is this has got a very organic feel, like it's grown. So there's this block that continues back that way, yes. which I just showed as I came up. It continues here, and this this is cut out, but you can see even here, that's all a big, massive quartz layer. So this whole thing is covered with that, and this may be the back end of the eyeball. That has uh, that has remained. You know, the eye is mostly water, and the cornea would be the lens, and that would fall away, obviously. And the, you know, the majority of the eye isn't still here, but this would be a thicker tissue that anchors the eye into the back of the the eye socket, and then from that come the blood vessels and the and the optic nerve. And I think that's exactly what you're seeing here: is that it's going going back. And all, again, all of this in here, this is all this quartz material. It's beautiful, really. And then it continues, and it continues down, and it goes back in, into that very direction where the, the cavern is that, that we explored in the second video. Yeah, that's nuts. That's pretty crazy. Diamonds. Yeah, so so we were up there, um, Andreas and Victor, and and it, uh, one of the two of them, I don't remember who, um, was like, "Look at this crystalline layer, you know, behind." And and I did. I, I was gone. Did it show the anatomy or no of the eye? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it did. It did. Okay. Um, is is yeah, Victor Buse? Is he? Is he? The thirteenth monkey? No, no, he was one oh. of the other guys. That was uh, there was because I had his I had his staff bought map, but then I lost it, and then he got kicked off YouTube, and I lost contact with him. He's still he's still on YouTube, but he doesn't create videos. He was he was streaming a bunch of videos that um, there was a group of people that were collaborating. This is like three okay. years three years ago. Yeah, yeah, uh, I did a couple of interviews with him. Yeah, back sort of around then. Yeah. Um, Let's see what was I, I was going to show. Oh yeah, the um, ear, the eye, eyeball. This is right. Yeah. So um, you probably just saw it, but the. I mean, if you look at the structure of the eye, it's got the the cornea, and it's not a very good picture. Um, I mean, this is really what you want to see here. So that's that's an eyeball <laughs> removed from the body. And you can see all this fatty layering which i theorize crystallizes <clears throat> and and basically all this is gone or is in petri petrified chunks just below this this like wave shape that that sticks up you know cresting upward um and and that whole back side you saw that right the did, it, did i play enough of the video where you you could see that oh, yeah. the entire backside of that structure is 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 covered in a layer of crystal this thick. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, there's this section going downward, which which you know kind of matches there's that even some, optic. This nerve. time I didn't notice last time, but there's even some dark matter spread about that could be like the dark matter that's inside the eyeball. You know what I'm saying? Like that that darkness. Uh, there's a word for it. Cor Cora. Oh, it's been too long, man. It's biology's been years ago. Yeah, there's the cornea. This is what's known as the cornea, vi vitreous, vitreous humor, which is you like a liquidy glass. Vitreous humor, vit vitrified. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's. I don't know how many lost threads do we have? I'll shut up for a while. I've been talking nonstop. No, it's, I'm, I'm, man, still, every time I see something new, 
Let me show on all this. And then we brought more this time around. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. I want to know how Camel yep. is going to tie all of this together because something tells me he's good enough that he can. <laughs> no I know it. No pressure at all. <laughs> no, no, no. My, my brain's going furiously in the background. <laughs> I mean, gosh, it's been a lot of information. That's what Mike did last time. Our brains were just broken at that point. It was just like, dude, I'm processing. Hang on a second. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm sure I will. I'm no doubt I'll come out with a flurry of videos in the next few days. I mean, it, I mean, it just it, the main thing is it just shows the fractal nature of where we are, doesn't it? All this it really. Mm. That's that's definitely my conclusion. Um, Oh, I was going to show some of those um, other Titan images. I got, I got to this one. This one we saw, you know. So this is this is the thing: is you always when you see these images, there it's always just one angle. You know, you you don't have anyone doing boots on the ground research where they're actually looking at the stuff up close showing you footage it's just these things that look like things and mm. and some people are like you're nuts and other people are like it is that 100 percent like okay this could be a being I, I i see that and i think it's cool that somebody did this but to just claim that it is this because it looks like that is uh that's pareidolia mm. yeah have you seen um um there's I don't know, a couple of channels putting out that um, like river rocks and I guess what you're looking at as, as organs and things are melted bricks. Have you seen, heard that? Yeah, yeah. The, the whole, I mean, I've seen lots of, of shots of buildings that look like they got hit, you know, and mm. some, some of them are red bricks. Some of them are made from white stone. Yep, um, yep. You know, the, I I have a theory that the that the, they were mining the titans, right? You've got yeah, yeah there's, definitely, there's, yeah. Have you have you come across uh, Mike Ferreira's work on on Facebook at all? He he's got uh, this uh, he's got this page that. called uh, Ancient Miner Earth, and he's looking at everything from a mining perspective, and he's saying yeah, that the giants yeah, were terraforming the entire realm. And that ties in a lot with a lot of things that Paul Cook has been finding lately, that the deeper down you go, the more megalithic it gets. And that like entire cliff structures, which we would think, you know, a cliff line is just a natural formation that, mm. uh, that you, you get up close and he's showing block work and uh, yeah, all kinds of, all kinds stuff. of stuff with geopolymers and, and showing mm. that it's just, you know, loads of stuff has been poured. And I, I think a, a lot of this megalithic architecture is just, geopolymer uh you know oh, no, lift, sure. no, yeah, lift, oh, no sure. lifting involved um mm. especially you know, the, just, the further back you go the, yeah yeah so mm. I, I i think that that's fine and you know i've got a i've got a folder here on melt so i can just show a couple of pictures from that um you know this, I mean, the, the whole, whole mining thing as well is um you know, if they knew if they knew they were giants, that would tell them where the deposits of different minerals were, wouldn't it? They could kind of figure out where, you know, which part of the body held, you know, the whatever they were looking for, and the silver vein, the right. iron vein, the gold and, vein. Yeah, <laughs> and it, and if the continents or major portions of the continents are great beings, and they know what the original shape was, then they know where the body parts are going to be. So they have a much better chance of finding what they're looking for if they're mining. Yeah, exactly. For because and we're so back to the map with the giant lady in the river now. Maybe that's what those maps were. That's a melted yeah, brick. Yeah. They do melt. Uh, there was a big yeah, uh, a bit of a question. controversy going on. This is a mirror concentrator that will that that'll melt bricks. Yeah, you know, yeah. They, they, I've seen I it done you in, in a YouTube them. video. Yeah, you can just buy like yeah. a little parabolic sort of silver disc. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so there are all these old diagrams and, you know, like this is, uh, yeah. light weapons using light. Um, and then, you know, when you see this Cappadocia stuff, the official story is that they've they've carved in, you know, and and, and I don't I don't believe that anymore. Why? I mean, sometimes it's like a big square hole on a sheer face, you know, like mm. somebody's going to like using Bronze Age tools is going to hang from ropes and, you know, Carve a solid square out of out of the side of a, a cliff. I don't think so. 
No, um, it's some oh, I mean, ridiculous, aren't they? Look at that. And then there's this whole thing with these churches that are like carved, carved out of one solid From block. one solid block, right. Yeah. I mean, to me, this looks like melt, and then they've recovered some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that looks very much like Petra, doesn't it? Um, that we've seen. But Petra's Petra more of like area. a sandstony sort of thing. Different right? rock, yeah, yeah, for sure. So going back to the ancient minor earth, this would this could be slag, you know, that has just yep. come over a building. Um, you know, you've got slag, uh, you've got cinder cones, all of the same stuff uh is waste products of mining. This is just yeah, yeah, know, yeah. a much larger scale. Built, so built, uh, tailings, tailing dumps, don't they? Oh, that one's in Russia. Yeah, yeah. That's um castle, what's it called? Castle something, or go or something. I have but another that one, that one they call a castle. Wow. I have another thought in my mind, and I don't know, but it's just why you're saying this. With the ancient mining, if the earth is designed, to, and again, you hear about the old magics and that and powers that some had before and the beings and that, could some of the mining even be done on a defensive type of scale, like with some of the grid lines and Again, maybe where some of the veins are laying and that having properties that work with it, you could harvest the energy and you could almost like take out regions and their magics or their energies by disrupting. They definitely know. Um, a lot Do you of see what I'm class. saying? Do you, yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? Like in a defensive type yeah, of Yeah, and I'm messing with the frequencies or yes, whatever and, uh -huh. and changing the actual structure. A lot of, a lot yeah. of really big abattoirs are built on um, ley line nodal points. So again, just a way of using harvesting, and again, and some of the mining could have just, even been uh, destructive too, because that's what I often wonder. The, yeah, just feeling, so, feeling the grid with death and. Mm -hmm. When well, we of, even now, I wonder whoa. when we mine diamonds and gold, um, if some of the things is to mess up the grid. I mean, mess up our. Yeah. It's like we're doing it out of greed and destroying how things work. I wonder. I don't know, but I wonder. Well, I mean, we, yeah, we've theorized that, you know, a lot of these, this, you know, with the gold rushes, right? It happened everywhere, right? In 1849 or 1848, um, 49. Um, you know, how did they find all these gold deposits at the same time in Australia as they did in the Americas, as they did in other countries? You know, we, were they literally going into old buildings and just raiding, raiding them? Was were they literally going in and getting gold, and it may have been melted or not? But but oh, the, story, the the gold rush doesn't make sense at all. This is Mount St Helens. This happened in just a few hours, and it's got all this micro layering of the sedimentary layers that they tell us, you know, take million, yeah. you know, thousands or millions thousands of years. Thousands of millions, yes. <clears throat> not. Um, you familiar with Wise Up's channel? Also, he talks yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. about you know the the high the, the high mineral content waters mixing with ash, uh, and that that's causing a lot of these um, you know really large wooden structures to then petrify to to stone over time. And, yeah. and the footage he has is amazing. Um, you know, I mean, it's it looks identical. <laughs> I mean, the term uh, is melted I... brick. What if that wasn't necessarily melted? You say melt, you think of heat, right? So you got to concentrate sunlight or you got to come up. Think of John Hutchison. He could turn and twist a metal wrench without any heat. Yeah, he could like turn, he could melt wood with his fucking shit. Yep. That's like kind of hard. Melt to wood. I haven't seen that one. Oh, either. yeah. Melt wood. Watch some more. This, and this, we have wood and metal like fused together and shit. dude he was doing insane shit yeah. next level is not even the word yeah it's i it's crazy i mean just the different possibilities and then that if you think that idea that you could do such a thing melt wood melt brick melt with this frequency thing then those crazy structures maybe weren't actually and again, carved. they you, were you use manipulated the word, into being. There you go. Melt. Mm, it's not necessarily mm, melt. Think of a well, directed energy weapon where you mm, take the direct the energy and you can direct matter to do and behave in certain ways, whether you can make mm, concrete turn to dust and you can make, you know, I-beams disintegrate as they fall. 
you can take mm. and use that energy to direct to direct manner to do things in a certain way. So I mm. I like the idea yeah. of melted bricks, but I just don't see it as like a high heat. We just scorched earth, melting things. It could be a frequency, exactly, yeah. or it a could frequency. be wider. It's a frequency field, it's like John water. Hutchison could uses. Be water. Water mm. is like again where you, if you put it all under water, parts of it are going to collapse. Parts of it are going to again crystallize and do things too. There are a mm. lot of different um, again water and moisture when things crystallize and turn over is seems to be a big thing. Now I do. I think that um, I mean I think that Titans have walked. I think that there's some history, not the history that they've given us, but we have a definite history that's never matched up. Even they've said the pyramids and uh, the different ruins don't match up with uh, like saying that we can't do it today. So I I don't believe that we're the first. I also don't believe that every mountain is that. Um, I don't, you know, I don't believe that 100% all mountains are melted buildings. What did they build the buildings mm. out of? And again, you get into some different things. I just think that, again, if people have been walking it, we have a lot of ruins. A lot of ruins. And, and if, if, and if the, ruins are, or the ruins are uh, advanced technology over what we have today. I mean, again, you look at the ruins and um, they're better than what we're building today. So there's saying that we're again not the first and not the brightest to walk the land you know ain't that the truth i heard an interesting thing about these the other day that uh, mm -hmm. uh i realized made a lot of sense is that um you know if you think of mount saint helens just you know leveling all of those trees and then the trees are caught up in the flow from the mountain <clears throat> some of those trees are going to are going to uh, come to a stop in an upright vertical fashion and then all of that other layering around them um you know is gonna is gonna harden so uh, that, that can be an explanation for how how that because this this kind of debunks that whole like how can a tree go go up through multiple different sedimentary layers like if we're talking you know pleistocene jurassic you know uh, yeah. whatever all these different lo levels like Oh, that tree really, that tree really lived a long time, you know. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. But uh, there was, you know, this. Where is it? I had something I was going to show you. That almost looks like that front bit's a building, like of a like it was bigger, and then they've come along and retrofitted it. Oh, the one the one I was just showing. Ah, uh, the one at Petra, yeah, had a massive cave behind it. That one. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> you gotta love this. Like we're just gonna do yeah. half, half steps oh, going up the side, like yeah, you know, and look above the, the um, man. as you do. Yeah. You do. There's more windows up in the hill up above those pillars. Uh huh. They, have, they haven't opened up. Right. Not the whole thing. It's, yeah, it's, the yeah. carver got the carver got a lot going up. Yeah, this <laughs> definitely is. There's more. And but see, and this know, is all what red it, as well. Oh so like, there's all these instances or reports of. Hell? Red, um, red dirt falling from the sky. So that's what that could be. Wow. So this looks like an art piece. That's crazy. Yes, but again, it, it could be all this kinds is, of stuff. This is the guy, Jose Manuel Castro. He manipulates stone like it was soft clay. Sculptures are full of twists and waves and wrinkles. What? Uh, no. How? Through magic. Didn't you see his relationship with well, stone? Well, here's, here's, here's the thing. I mean, you guys, you guys know about Girolamo Sagato, right? We talked. I think we talked about. This, him you last mentioned time. him, right? <laughs> this one is a great picture, Lewis. Oh, oh wow! <laughs> so this is clearly geopolymer, and before he sets it, you know, he, yeah. he manipulates it. Yeah. I had, a, I got a, I, I, you know, a, a dentist. Nice. Dentists nowadays are working with polymers, and. It's soft mm. until they hit it with UV light for like 20 seconds, and then and then it starts to harden very rapidly. Within within like a half an hour after leaving, or even less, you can already eat on the the filling. 
Um, so, so you've got, you've got this guy who's in modern times messing with stone and making it look like it's just clay. Right. Um, and then we've got all this information about geopolymers. We've got recipes. I haven't seen it yet, but yeah. Paul Cook's latest uh, video, he makes a geopolymer, I think in the, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, haven't seen it either. I, haven't, yeah, I just saw, I saw the yeah. thumbnail, yeah. but I haven't, uh, I haven't seen the video yet. Um, yeah, it's, um, so, da David, da da what's his name? Davidos, da Davitos or something. Um, yeah. he was the guy who first started researching the pyramids and, and making geopolymers and stuff. Yeah, well, it all looks to be geopolymer. I think it all is. Yeah, I that? think everything that isn't Titan is geopolymer. It's either volcanic, um, it's like original whatever you know the Earth is made of, um, or or it's a former living creature. <laughs> okay, so what if there was an ability, a power, a tech, whatever, in the hands of Whoever, I mean, you know, we're getting all that whole who are they thing. But if it was, I mean, we talk about the growing of the rocks, Cammy, and then we've got all of the stuff you've discovered and you're digging through this fucking giant elephant, uh, Mike, and then just add that years of stuff Campbell's thrown at us, st structures that make no fucking sense. If you look, can I borrow the uh, share for just a minute, Mike? Absolutely. Uh, if you look into, and it was, I think, Kelvin and Chad that mentioned it way earlier, and it got me digging, are these guys. So these are little tiny microorganisms that literally grow these crystalline structures inside their fucking bodies. Look at the intricacy here. Look at the intricacy. So they're, called, some, they're called diatoms. This is right. And there's various sizes, various shapes, various structures, as you see here. And if you think about that idea of the basic shapes that we get with the tree of life, the seed of life, things like that. And then if there's a field like a matrix that exists that can be accessed, manipulated, think about the uh, uh, calorian, I mean, uh, that is it. Killerian, Killerian. I can't think of the name. You want to say you want to say Killerian photography, oh, where you take a leaf and you cut away oh, part of the leaf, it, yeah. right? And then there's still the same fucking shape of the leaf in the electro field left over after the leaf's cut. So think about that, and then macro yeah. it up to the gigantic scale. What if these are just fucking things that were grown? These crazy structures we can't understand. Yeah, yeah. The, well, um, I think I, I think that's probably on... what sedimentary layering is like for limestone. It's probably an accumulation right, right. of all, all of those. Mm. You know, There's a lady Campbell? who records the silence of cathedrals, and she records the silence, then plays it back and records it and does it seven times and gets like a resonant frequency. Wow. So every building has its own, literally has its own frequency, its own, you know, you know resonant tune. So, I mean, is were they grown? Like, are they literally right. solid sound? Like, I made this video called Solid Sound. Are they literally the expression of a frequency in 3D? Uh, did I show you the necklaces that Austin showed us? I think when you were here before, Campbell, where you can get somebody's name or say, I love you. Yes, you, know, you did. In yeah. 3D for you. Yeah, yes, yes. that was crazy. Yeah. Uh, what Sylvie Ivanova from New Earth, she um, she had a video that I saw a while back that she was basically talking about growing, growing stone, not in the sense of like, like Cammy mm. was talking about of growing crystals, but, but almost like, um, like baking bread, you know, where or muffins, mm. where, yeah, where yeah, you yeah. like add the yeast, and then they start to like, because she's showing that there's this grid like structure but they the the different individual like cells don't don't really conform to it because they've they've come outside of the um the framework and then kind of squished and melted together um i have a picture of that somewhere yeah, i found i had a book that had different recipes of and it, like i literally had how to make a ruby how to make an emerald <laughs> you know it's like forget your expense oh here we go no, that's not it. 
Yeah, Cam, I've been in the laboratory and I've watched that happen. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it sounds like, very cool. I want to do it. Need some equipment, but I'm all in. <laughs> I'm still trying to. I, mean, I, need, I need lots of equipment. Oh. These, these are the salt mountains. And they're just amazing, the, the beauty of them. Those are in Iran, and wow. they are incredible. Yeah, yeah, incredible. Yeah. Some of my favorites, I mean, by the way. Wow. This looks like ice cream melting. That's, yeah, <laughs> like, like Candyland or something, yeah. And that's all salt, is it? Yep. You have impurities in that, but overall, um, that is the main content of it. It's super, and the colors and the, you can get lost in pictures oh, of the this hell? range for years. No doubt. Good Lord. Eye candy. So what's the explanation for this? Layers of oceans in the ancient days or what, 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 what are they saying made this happen? Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Uh, what? What? Salt Cathedral. I'd be curious to know which part of the body has the that highest has, concentration of salt. Right? The salt of the earth. Yes, sir. So when I use Himalayan pink salt, I'm like, it's, it's giant, it's crystals. Exactly, <laughs> Ronald. What the hell? <laughs> We're all cannibals, man. Right? Look at, look at these chunks here. <laughs> it's like it, it's a massacre. Yeah, yeah. It's just I like, know one way to get the salt out of these plants is to calcify. You burn it. You burn the plant down. You dry it out and burn it. And then when water is, and you get it to its white ash, you burn out all the impurities. And then when water is added back to that, it will crystallize, and you have the salt of that plant. That is like the matrix of the plant makeup. You take out all the oil, all the water, all the alcohol, and then all the impurities, oh. and you have the salt left with that plant. Nice. So I was just, somebody in, in one of our chats, I don't know if it was last time you were on my or if it was during one of the other shows, it all sort of blends together at some point. Um, hell, it might not even been here. About the the spirits of these fallen angels are inhabiting countries, right? So, like each spirit gets its own geographical location. <laughs> well, it says that that um in the Bible, a piece of land, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Region. So yeah, yeah, yeah. What if fallen angels? It was more literal. These titans yeah, they fell, fallen, yeah. and now we can mine them because they were living in upright and standing, but they died and fell. fell. The spirit then inhabits the land. The actual alcohols, the spirits. The spirits, yeah. everything, the soul of the being then, and that sort of generates Whoa. the... <laughs> energetic yeah, because vibe the, of the, the ge geography. Exactly, yeah, because the land is is the giant and so or the titan. So that frequency is then is the titan. So that frequency is then the land. And it's also in everyone who who lives there and consumes stuff from it. And the leaders then carry on this sort of fallen angel Nephilim spirit to rule and be the archons and control everybody. And it's that spirit from the fallen angels that fell in that land. And now the rulers use the ruler energy to rule that geographical area. Mm, to assault us. <laughs> yeah. And alchemy is, you know, knowing how all these different elements interact with one another and that if if you understand where they are in the body and um what their function is then maybe you know you can well you can make use of that in infinite number of ways i'm sure if you have that knowledge mm. this mm. is something this is something walt sent me on he, he he 
he dove into a bunch of stuff after after we talked and uh you know he's talking about um petrified wood uh it can be made you know and far faster than you would think this is the the the, the high voltage line i think it was six hours that the current was running through it before the the tree tree stumps and the root structures turned to stone but uh yeah in in mining you know they talk about all kinds of things artesian wells uh like walt said before with gold veins so um it's mm. uh, fascinating stuff what else do I it else is do like we're, we're literally we're standing on the shoulders of giants right but we're literally like you know if we think of it titans down to you know giants down to us kind of thing getting smaller like we're literally feeding off you know the big the titans die and then the next race feeds off them and lives off them that's that's the the salt the food the minerals all this kind of stuff and then and then it happens again we're literally just like all the little stuff feeds off of us when we die you know the little exactly and then the same happens to us i want to go watch honey guys shrink the kids so below as what as josh i'm sorry well just for that reason walt as above so below i want to go back and watch honey i shrunk the kids because maybe the story Someone isn't about mentioned that. us shrinking but us having to yeah. live amongst giants and that's what the really story is is that there was a life where we had to live amongst giants as though we were shrunken down well what about armor and all these knights and, and samurai soldiers and arm you know they tell us it's just so that we put all our resources into the best stuff so that then we could just go and kill each other and ruin it. But was was, was that much more for defense? Because we've got all these stories of giant killers and giant hunters and you know, Van Helsing's and all this kind of stuff. So I think I think all that kind of tech, the armor and that, I think it was all to defend people against whatever, right? Giants or other grisly sort of creatures. Well, why would you... Was, why would you need to be an 18th century aeronautic attorney? <laughs> exactly right. Because you're getting ready for Orville and Wilbur to take that first flight in the 1800s. Right. Just and you just case. want to make sure the laws were already on the books. So that Whose grandmother said we've had planes forever? I don't remember who said that even earlier. Oh, really? Day. Well, yeah, I mean, they say 1903. In 1903. Orville and Wilbur, what they fly something like 14 feet, Sailed basically on a bicycle blue. with a glider tied to it. And then, um, you know, within 20 years, we'll, you know, having dog fights and flying around in, you know, proper planes. Oh, it's just dumb. As you do. Well, so I guess that do does it. kind of make sense. So I guess the story was that this person's mother had asked her grandmother, you know, oh. kind of what it was like to be around to see airplanes come about and her the, this person's mother's grandma her great grandmother was born in 1900 and her answer to what it was like to be around to see air flight and air travel come about she said well airplanes have always been here but if mm. orville and wilbur were doing their flights and making the the press and the papers and the wire in 1904 when she was four years old and she literally did even still in 1900 grow up with airplanes being a thing. Mm. Even roughly. And of course, 1930 okay. Hindenburg goes down and that's pretty much around the time they started pushing airplanes. Right. Mm -hmm. I showed these last time, but this is what you got to watch out for. Somebody turn this one into a <laughs> <laughs> they turned someone turned that one into a hippopotamus, and yeah, then this yeah, this yeah. one just magically got That's carved silly. into this. They had an afternoon, <laughs> it's, it's that AI <laughs> art, art, I tell you, gosh. No, that's just good texturing. <laughs> yeah, somebody been at it a minute. Yeah. Mask Did any of you? I, I shared this in the Ironworks. Um, um, uh, Skype channel, but strolling under the skin. Did any of you get to see this? Mm -hmm. This is nice. just unreal. Yeah, show sure this. Muscles, fluids, fibrils, and cells. Here we are at the very heart of complexity.
A capernium of collagen bathed in glycolicin with reservoirs of fatty microglobules storing energy, information, and matter. A communications network for exchanging energy, matter, and information between the component parts of the system and the various reservoirs by way of a torrent of blood rushing between the nerves, veins, arteries, and cells. Some mechanisms are still poorly understood, such as the fluctuations in pressure, visible in these images of the movement of drops within a filament that is clearly hollow. There's even more to the story. Within this global network encompassed by the skin, you also have valves able to increase or decrease the flow of information in terms of intensity and speed. Storage times play a leading role here in amplifying or inhibiting other mechanisms with a direct consequence on fat and lymph reserves. This multi-microvacular system, which at first sight seemed chaotic and complex, is therefore a set of elements with a large number of non-linear interconnections and arranged with a universal aim in mind. To promote life, to subdivide, to multiply according to preordained criteria such as the level of oxygen, the temperature of the body, and the composition of the plasma. This internal state of equilibrium... How are they getting this footage? This is incredible. It was a Titan. I don't even know. That. <laughs> right. It's a P900 shot. What are you talking about, Walt? Yeah. <laughs> so they said, uh, what did they say? Um, memory, um, the valves open and, and can, um, you know, let through or accelerate knowledge. I mean, so that means that, that literally being stupid can be a habit. Oh, yeah. You, you know, like, watch like enough it's, it's, screens and have enough dumb shit. I mean, yeah, you. we know it's taught, yeah, but it's it funny is, to think of it like as a habit, isn't it? it? Yeah, it builds those pathways, and that's where you sit in that in that rut of the neural pathways that have been built with. Gosh, I mean, but, shit. God, you'd have to slow it down a lot, wouldn't you? You'd have to get it to like. <laughs> I don't how know how they stop those, those, those other thoughts benefit. and tell you to get up? Like, I'd like I to see watch a movie for an hour. My brain's yelling at me, going, "You're wasting your life. Do something." <laughs> <laughs> well, there's so much do. stuff to figure out. Get out there and there figure is. it out. There's so much stuff. It's not enough time. Should, we should know it all by now. Come on. Well, yeah. I mean, but imagine what we would know if we'd spent all those years in school actually learning stuff that was relevant. It's fascinating, you know, the way mycelium grows. And there, there are theories that yeah, surround, yeah, yeah. That, that surround um, the, you know, the fascia that the, uh, where'd it go? Oh, because it's very yeah. similar. Yeah, that, that there's mm. actually, you know, one of the, there's a well, conundrum <clears throat> that's talked about in uh, like physiology where how, how are people able to do certain things so fast? So like whether it's a music, musical instrument or a person, a ball is coming and they're just like, you know, is it, is it intuitive? Is it a sixth sense? What's going on there? And uh, when, when they look at the, the nervous system and the distribution of, of the nervous system, the flow of information through the nerves has a, has a particular speed and they measure it and they do e, uh, EKG, you know, where the, or not EKG, what is it? Nerve conduction tests, basically. If they want to find out if a person has a pinched nerve, they, they'll put, put electrodes and then they'll, They'll send a signal and they'll see how much of the signal arrives at the other end. And, and they, they know about axon potentials, the firing of the, of the neurons in the nervous system, and they have a speed. Well, when you add up how many of those there are and how much information the body would have to calculate mm. and com compute in order to be able to, to grab that ball or to play, you know, the Rachmaninoff fifth or whatever, mm. um, there's just not enough there. And it's, you know, especially if it's, you know, rapidly changing situations like in a sport or something. Um, where do we where do we think though? Do we think inside our, our head? Where is the mind? Because mm. they have done tests on um, like um, informed fields and you know auras and things, energy fields, and and it changes before before people react. Mm. 
Yeah. So, they're, they're, so there's something else there that's driving it. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a there's a theory that's come out about fascia that uh, because it's this liquid crystalline structure that it's capable of what's known as a uh, solitonic transmission. And yeah. You, you guys know what solitons are? Have you heard Is that what, my, what mycelium does? Like it, I think it, mycelium probably it, it uh, gets information and feeds it down the line kind yeah. of thing, and then it can send it back. Do you see solution? this whole picture here? Because I have... Oh, I can move that. Yeah, got, uh, you don't, Wiki, you don't yeah. see that. Okay, good. Yeah, we don't see your little gray that. square. Just move it where oh, you need to. Oh, good. Okay. They did gotcha. fix that. It for, was keep, showing for a while, but they fixed it. I keep forgetting. So, so Soliton, um, if um, there's all these papers, this is something I was looking at here. Uh, of course, now I need to be over there to control it. So, I'll just leave that back where it was. Um, this is what a, a soliton wave looks like. So drop in a little extra water. And it doesn't lose intensity, it just maintains. Okay, so it doesn't have the curve of the wave kind of it's just a constant. It's it's a it's a it's the way that the wave propagates through the the medium see how it bounces and, and goes so back it's, just a, it's a constant yeah it's got like a constant yeah so that's structure. that's one way of visualizing it and then there's then there's this you might have seen um <clears throat> okay we're gonna try to make some basically he uh is gonna just push this through the water oh yeah yeah i'm there and and he creates these these vortexes these opposite oh. spinning Opposite spinning vortexes. That's so crazy. I used to play with that in the pool. With the and they, there. yeah, they'll just keep spinning <laughs> and go all the way to the other end of the pool. And so that's another way of, of visualizing this um, this vortexing okay. that's happening. This yeah. is also, um, these are soliton pairs. Um, <clears throat> so, which, which gets into, you know, because that's what's propagating. Is it is it electrical? Is it sound? Is it light? Uh, maybe it's <laughs> maybe it's all of the above. Some of each, right, right, right. A little bit and, of the mix. Uh, and so, let's see. Nope, not that one. Cavitation, sonoluminescence. You know about this? Oh, star. that's my that's my <clears> name, man. star in the oh, jar, right? Man. So there's mm -hmm. there's your cymatic frequencies coming from sound, but what's also happening is is there's that expansion of the bubble and then it implodes and that's a that's a cavitation yeah <clears throat> and and that gives off sound and light at the same time um but the uh i learned a bunch of that from watching globebusters <laughs> i learned so much from those guys <laughs> this is this is another example but but basically the idea is if you saw how how the fascia was moving, um, <clears throat> you know, and, and as it's getting pulled, it doesn't respond like the way, you, the way you would think it would logically. Like there's an order to it that you just don't grasp when you're looking at it mm -hmm. as, it's, as it's moving around. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, you know, if you, design. yeah, if you look at neural pathways, you know, the more the more you think thoughts, the more you know something, the more you chunk information so that you can just um, quickly do something that that is creating. It's like the Lichtenberg figures. It's creating the more the more time the energy is flowing through the structure, the deeper and more pro uh, pronounced the structure becomes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, the neural pathways work the same way as they're as they're being created in the yeah, brain. Yeah, 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 uh, so the, yeah. So that's and that's how habits are formed. Literally, the more that you use, yeah, 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 yeah. And a lot of that happens in the little brain, which is the cerebellum. That's where these these uh, these habits are chunked, um, and that's where the the tree of life is, the arbor vitae, which uh, mm. is the most compact. Uh, I don't know if you knew I was a chiropractor, um, Campbell. But no. This one, Arbor Vitae, Cerebellum. That's why, that's why I know some of this stuff, because I studied a, a bunch in school. Um, so here, 
Oh, I'm not sharing. What are you seeing? Wait, where is it? I'm lost. It happens. Share. Some of those tabs, Mike. There we go. Share <laughs> screen. Share. I've been trying to close them one by one. Um, where'd it go? Ah, it's minimized. There we go. So this is the arbor vitae. Oh, and the so this is the this is the main the main um yeah, that's the eye of raw there, pineal gland and and uh, the ventricles. And then the 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 cortex here, and then this is the little brain, which is the cerebellum, and that's where we like a tennis player, you know, that perfect serve, it's just body memory. That's where that becomes body memory. And yeah. that has the densest uh, concentration of neurons in, in the whole nervous system. And mm, I mean, the, that's den right. the dendrites, the dendrites that come off of each individual neuron are just, you know, out of this world when it comes to the connections to the yeah, potential connections to other neurons. So, yeah, it's potential, a, so it's potential connections, though, isn't it? So that. They don't yeah, like a all, like a they? child. So the ones we choose to sort of connect, and that's what becomes our, yeah, our and our habits and all that. Our kind habits of stuff. make things ingrained, mm, you know. Yeah, so yeah, a child yeah. is like infinite potential until it gets messed with <laughs> by until society say, oh, or poisoning or whatever. Imaginary friend doesn't exist. Um, yeah. So fascia is fascinating because these this. Um, this is like this might be like the the information superhighway of the nervous system because fascia fascia, fascia goes nice. from the the toes to the bottom of the toe all the way up to the top of the skull. It's in every single tissue mm. in in every layer of every tissue, and um, you know you can see this is a cross section of muscle. Yeah, and 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 fascia goes throughout that. Oh, but if you yeah, but if yeah. you zoom in. Oops. Oh. Uh, no, <laughs> it does not compute. There it is. <clears throat> um, anyway, you know, I can. Oh, it's it, it's an interesting word too. You, you know, can fascia, fashion, fascist, fascist, and the fascist, um, the fascist is, is also what is it? It's a, it's I mean, a the fascist. Look, look at them. Yeah, look at the middle bit poking out of that bit of meat. That yep. looks like a fascist. Yep, yep, yep. You can hear it in the words. Um, yeah, yeah. and, uh, so the, the, uh, going back to the solitonic transmission. So as this is stretched, so depending on what you're doing with movement or, you know, whatever it is, and the majority of neurons in the, in the, in the body go to the hands. That's the That's biggest right. consumer of neurons in the whole body, you know? <laughs> so psyllium so, is, is the same kind of stuff, but for the earth. Yeah, so it's it, there. You have your fractal so, light. light so it's it's going to be holding memory for for yeah. how how it's been treated by us, pretty much, kind of thing. And they say but, we're closer to the mushrooms than we are to the plants. I don't know. Yeah, what well, that, you know, which they, they got this there is to that, and um, I mean, it, it um, it can eat and destroy um, radiation, oil, plastics, anything, because basically mm. it'll go up to something and touch it. And then send signals back, and all it wants to work out is how do I turn this into food? And it works mm. it out, and it sends it back, makes the chemicals and everything, and it just starts eating whatever it comes in contact with. Like I mean, yeah. that's all, that's all we yeah. need. How, how do we have pollution if we've got psyllium? I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah. Paul Stamets has done an amazing work uh, on you know understanding so much about about mushrooms <laughs> and reclaiming lost knowledge. Um, <clears throat> and it's interesting that uh, mushrooms make all that the information flow, which is your, your fasci sort of system, which is your psyllium system. That's an interesting picture <laughs> to save. Um, oh yeah, just to finish the thought about the the um, the mycelial or my, well mycelium is is one thing but I, I imagine there's you know there's a connection obviously um mm. 
and our nervous systems may just be the extension of mycelium. Ultimately, you so, know, we're we're the so offspring of the mushroom. You know, for what all if you know. mycelium holds, how you know retains um, knowledge? Shall we say knowledge? Then titans fall over, and 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 there, <laughs> the silly minute that we find in the ground is just what came out of the giants, right? That is their, um, what's it called? Mycelium, uh, fasci, fasci, fasci stuff. Yeah, that's Fascia. what I think I'm finding all over the place. So, so, here, so literally, it could know. have migrated out of their bodies and into the ground as they became, you know, the ground. As they right. Well, we just crossed the three Which and a half hour mark. That, that the Earth has been encoded with the information from times from a couple of thousand years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's something else I was going to show there, but I lost I lost the train of thought. So with the the mycelial network, so solitonic transmission. Just to finish up the thought, is that probably anytime there's a stretch on any of this it's sending solitonic waves in both directions from the source of the movement. And so that's informing the entire body about what's happening in that particular location. And uh, so, <clears throat> so this, this, this may be, other, what's that? Do they bounce off each other? Probably. Like, is that what you're trying to yeah. say? They come yeah, and probably, as they hit, they exchange information and go back to where they came from? Potentially, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm out of touch with this research. This is something I was All looking right. into over... 10 years ago and I haven't been following it up um, because um, now it's interesting because it ties back into what I'm finding with the, with the geology. (laughs) Um, Yeah. The, um, there was some, Oh, here we go. Going back to, I I should, and and of course, you know, what this picture before now we're on the, the, the worldwide web. Exactly. The the silicon base, which is what crystalline, right. Mm. In nature. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we're speaking through fiber optic cables, um, which are, which are um, <clears throat> you know, transmitting light, but what are they made of? <laughs> so this is something I showed last time. This is, this is just flow, crystalline flow. I think, I mean, some of it looks like it's it's smooth and it's been melted, but when you get up close to the other stuff, it's like very, it's very beautiful. Mm. Um, and maybe so. All awesome. of all of these different components are found all over, all over this region, where there just happens. Look at that up close. <laughs> and how much of that so, is new so growth, beautiful. and how much of that is old? I mean, it may not have started out like that. Exactly. And maybe because because now it doesn't seem to have a uniform uniformity. Like if you look at tissue under microscopes, that was what I was forgetting. There we go. Finally, one last thread here that I wanted to pick up. Going back to the biogeology thread. It's um, yeah. I think we have to wrap it up here soon. It's just about that time. I think. Yeah. So, are crystals? Are you think? Is this? Are we looking? At, like, is this fat? Fat deposits? It could be fat. It could be fascia. It could be. Um, uh, it could be. It could also be petrified blood plasma because it seems like the iron clumps, and that's going to be your red blood cells, which mm-hmm. is going to be the red portion. And then, as I showed you before, the other half of the blood is, uh, you know, the interest. The the uh, what do you call? It? Yeah. Anyway, it's got the uh, the long chain fatty acids, the, mm-hmm. the albumin, and all, all that. And if you remove all the water from that, it's crystalline. So mm. it's just you know, interesting just that, looking that at... lipid cells are the cells in the body that store stuff, right? Uh, and yeah, well, that's they, they encapsulate energy right? and, in, Ex- and in, exosomes. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Same <laughs> right, we crystal. heard a lot about exosomes over the last couple of years, right? Because they're they're fatty encapsulations of cellular debris, basically yeah. that the body's expressing, uh, getting rid of. Yeah, yeah. So this yeah, this so... is this is uh, fascia, and uh, you know this is. This is striations of muscle, yeah, so yeah, cross yeah, section yeah. of muscle. This is lengthwise. So you look at already just with those two pictures, all the different ways in which those components could manifest. And then imagine not just a cross section, but at different angles. And how is it going to look? And what are you going to see? Think about that. What was the name of that stone you were talking about before? Uh, bauxite. Yeah. Right. 
kind mm-hmm. of boxy, uh-huh. right? <laughs> from mm-hmm. from this direction, but not from this direction. So it depends on where you are and what angle you're looking at it from. This is muscular striation. So now you're going to get that, oh, it's melted brick kind of thing, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Um, and then this is just another another angle or not, another way in which muscle can striate and manifest. And then you have different kinds of muscle. You have the heart muscles, one kind of muscle. You have the muscles of the, the internal organs in the digestive tract that are doing like uh, contractions along tubes. Yeah. Peristalsis and high twitch. Peristalsis, high twitch. thank yeah. you. That's that's what I was looking at. I mean, look <laughs> at the complexity of this. It's just uh, it's just amazing. So mm. smooth muscle, that's what I was talking about before. Heart muscle is smooth muscle. Um, you know, vagina, digestive tract, all of that, that's all smooth muscle. And then then you have the skeletal muscles, which do the, you know, that. Binding yeah, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. So time to wrap well, up. Okay. I think, I'm, yeah, I'm I the think... one who's up up at 4 a.m. here. So. <laughs> is it 4 a.m. where you are? Is yeah, it? He, he did. He did it. He did it again and stayed up for us. Oh, got up. Yeah. Well, definitely, we're hit, we're pushing into what almost four hours, three and a half, yep. uh, four it's almost three forty-five, wow. three forty-six. Um, oh wow, four and hours. And we could go, And the problem is, we could keep going for another three hours, everybody. And as you know, we do. So let's <laughs> put a bookmark here, and you both are welcome separately, and definitely come back again, and let's toss this shit around, because. I've ignored the chats completely. Thank you, Amos. Yeah, I know, I know, right? Thank Sorry you, Amos on Rock Band, for the super <laughs> chat that started the whole thing off, and we screwed it up on Rock Band. So sorry about that, Amos. We finally got it working again, and then I know I've missed super chats on. Uh, so uh, one, uh, there's one right there from Thunder Chicken. Yep, thank you, sir. Tartarian brick lava lamps for the win. <laughs> I love it, guys. One, it's been beyond epic. One last awesome, yeah. important important subject absolutely <clears throat> and not, it won't take long but um i mentioned in in the live stream uh when uh, you were talking about having harry hubbard on and i just i just want to let you know i've had interactions with harry hubbard uh and i've made a video about it <laughs> and it's it's kind of an important video for everything we've been talking about tonight um so i i would just recommend you watch it and ponder what's there <laughs> okay and then if you watch it watch his rebuttal because that's on his channel awesome i can't wait okay <laughs> yeah right. We're all ready and, and i'll <laughs> and i'll just show you because um um i have a lot i could say about this but obviously that would take hours um but it's a long video and it's um hold on i had it pulled up wait where is it while you're looking for that, it's, everybody, it's, the uh, links are in our just description show. for Mike's channel and for Campbell's channels and various other Ooh. areas to get with these gentlemen's research. There you go. And thank um, you for everyone in chat. Hello, Hippie, 17, Joy, Earth Coin, Oise, and everyone else. Thanks for hanging around for four hours and still being there. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, where is it? It's right here. It is. Um, oh, kitty, kitty, kitty. So. <laughs> yeah, she's a talker. Oh. Don't worry. It started with this video, which is 15 minutes long. Uh, Harry Hubbard contacted me was interested in doing uh, further examination, investigation on the heart stones. So this is a video about and showing the stones that I sent to a colleague of his, of his who owned a laboratory in uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico, I think is where it was. And then <clears throat> the, um, the results came in <laughs> and that's what this video is about here. And it's three hours long. So I hate I hate to tell you to do it, but if you can find the time, watch it at one and a half speed or something. But um just just so you know. Yeah, it's hard to expect yeah. people to watch long form stuff these days. It is. <laughs> Especially if yeah. you do it three times a week. 
<laughs> it's it's yeah. I make cuts of everything these days. You just got it. No one's got the time. Yeah, no, I'm working on it. I, I'm really working on it. I've got about the first forty episodes of the Ironworks downloaded so far. I'm going to break those up and then cut those up, and uh, mm-hmm. we'll be having some smaller snippet out of the vault yeah. stuff coming up soon from six, seven years ago. Retro <laughs> Iron Realm. Yeah. That's the is, the, is the chat available after the fact? It'd be fun to see what people were, were talking about and saying. <laughs> That's I, a good thing. Yeah, it'll pop. It'll pop. It up should sometimes. pop up if you just watch it. Yeah, on the repeat, yeah. it should pop up. Yeah, yeah. It's funny, isn't it? But sometimes there's it been a couple but, that they haven't. Right. I and think it's just the last thing to pop up. You guys are just impatient and checking too early. Just too fucking eager. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> Me impatient? Come on. Well, it was fun to talk with you, Campbell. I, I really enjoyed it. Yes. And, and and you've been doing so much great work for so long. I really. Uh, Oh, I appreciate I appreciate your perspectives and how you messages and and uh, you know that you're trying to get people to think for themselves and do their own their own research and study and uh, yeah, pretty much. I, I feel exactly the same and and I I'm a big fan of, of the scientific method when it's applied correctly the actual scientific method. <laughs> like yeah, actual yeah. scientific method. Yeah. Know, right. Right. Well, before we get out of here real quick Campbell let us know what you and Kelly got coming up. In the near future. In the near future. So this Thursday, we have a chat with Jason from Archaics, and we get into um, Australian history and resets and things like that. Um, in the next weeks, we've been exploring sort of um, airships and floating cities. And then October, the weekend of October the 22nd, we have a live event in Brisbane. Um, so um, tickets, everything is at tartariaaustralia.com. That oh, is what's going on. on. That is awesome. I can't even get over to South Carolina or any of that. I don't think I'll be to <laughs> Australia soon. But... No, oh, come on. No, I might try and get get up there next year um, for the Plat Platova Fest. That would be fun. We need to see if we can't twist Kelly's arm to coming on here with you one of these. Yeah, times. that'd be awesome, man, for sure. Kelly, I'd yeah, I can get Kelly on if you want mm-hmm. Kelly. Yeah, yeah, sure. Just get your earmuffs and and we'll be right. (laughs) Quite loud. (laughs) Kelly's great, but Kelly's, it's really funny. People either love her or they just don't like her. It's really weird. I get that. (laughs) Passion, that's what it is. She's great. She's great. I mean, yeah. Um, Yeah, the imagination queen is what she is. Campbell, I, uh, I reached out to Jason a couple months ago, actually, or, or, you know, shortly after I discovered his work asking, uh, uh, you know, if he'd be interested in a conversation, but I haven't heard back. I sent a right, two, right. two or three emails and he, he talks regularly about email yeah, yeah. and live streams. When was, so was I don't that, know. It got, might got been the last funneled into junk. Six weeks or so? Yeah, maybe six weeks ago. He yeah. has been, I know that just recently, sort of the last six weeks or so, he hasn't been taking anything else on because he got all booked up. Yeah, I can imagine. So maybe he just sent <laughs> another email in a week or so. He probably just, yeah. I, mean, I know what it's like. He just gets to a point where I can't even, I, I literally, I've taken my emails and, and I've made it as impossible for people to contact me as I can. And I still get too much to get through. So it's mm. just ridiculous. I need a PA. Yeah, Don't want to work with me. The way I did. So it would be hard for people to find me. Mm. <laughs> I was thinking hey. when I picked that spelling, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to be good times for all, but I'm going to spell it so weird that when people search good times for all on YouTube, they're not going to find me at all. <laughs> my sign outside my office is this big. <laughs> and I, I, and I, I figure if channel. they find me, they wanted to come see me. <laughs> I lost my channel for three months because I literally couldn't remember how to spell the email address because it's just so weird. <laughs> I couldn't get into it for like for months. So many of the messages and things get lost in the thing, especially when you're on a roll and so many of them get hit at you at once. Just so you know, Mike and um, you, Campbell, if you don't know, I've been watching the chat and um, Jason has been in the chat for most of the evening. 
And I hear from other people, Michael, I'm not sure how Shiva, maybe you guys know Shiva Shampoo is um, connected on it, but says, sorry, your emails didn't get answered, Mike. I am working on it. So um, did, did you say um, Jason was in the chat? Yeah, as Archaic. Yeah, yeah. Archaic. Archaic. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Wow. Hi, Jason. Okay, well. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Asking you, shall receive. Another, another synchronous. A draw. Y'all didn't know. <laughs> Right. Wow. Well, there you go. Maybe I'm going to. I'm so bad at reading chat. I did one with Dave last night. Got I, to the end I, I honestly, I haven't I, even talked to anyone. Again. I didn't even think of the chat until somebody mentioned it like five That's or ten so minutes ago. I'm like, get better on it. But, speaking but of thank hard you to for find. Everyone, no we offense. Love you all. We love you. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we just hit 4,300 subscribers there on YouTube. Just during the nice. show, or as the show kicked off, it just rolled over. Nice. There cool. you go. Speaking of hard to find. <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, YouTube. Yeah. All righty. Well, thanks, uh, thank guys. You. That no, was thank awesome. You. Yes, sir. Oh, thank, thank you, you Campbell. Campbell. Thank you, Campbell. And you know the way thank here, you, and you know the uh, secret code to get in the back door there with that Zoom link, and you do as well, thank Mike. You. So if there's ever a topic going and you're just – can't stand it, it and it just throw it in. And please, you're welcome. Always, always, guys. Family. Awesome. You guys have yeah. a great Definitely. space. Here. Would love to, yeah, love to finish the convo. I'll Campbell, I know how busy you are. I one really day. do, but you do have to come back. And one of the times you have know, to come man. back, and I have to let you talk more. I am so sorry. <laughs> no, um, no, you're, you're good. I, like to I got past. Like no, I, you just, you get passionate. You know how you go when you just get up, you get passionate about something and sometimes mm. it feels like you're just talking and can't shut up. And I um, was so excited that you were coming on and then spewed. And I, I really, I want to, I want to, I want to talk with you. I know how busy you, you are. You want to pick Cam. my brain? Yeah, I want to pick your brain. I really want to pick, pick your brain. brain. Yeah, yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll make a, a special Please let me. Um, show just for you, Cammy. Hey, Cam and Cam, right? Right. The the cam. Dual the cam, cam. And cam show. I like that. Cam, cam squared. Dual cam yeah. overdrive. Super <laughs> nerdy. <laughs> I like the cam squared. We can um, hang with um, Zach yeah. squared. I've got my glasses on. I look like a, a geek. I have squared. glasses. I can put them on. I, I can put my hair up in a bun. I, I even have a lab coat. Oh. It yeah. says Globusters on it. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, okay. I'm going to have to geek myself up. Is that a black lab or a golden lab? It's the white lab coat, the total nerd jacket. We did um, – <laughs> what was really funny is is we did one of the conferences um, in Dallas in the lab coats, and some of the comments on it um, on one of the international conferences were the – scientists coming into our chat or into the after show and they were so zach i don't know if you got the comments but they were really upset that we had the audacity or that we wore the lab coats or whatever um they it's didn't a bold like statement. It, that we were mocking it that's a bold statement i gotta say i mean these days wearing a mink coat can catch us in flat but wearing a coat made out of a labrador that's some bold uh -huh. statement <laughs> yes. no, i saw somebody on facebook talking about they were going to start their bunny farm with you know price of food rising and everything they were going to start yeah, supplementing right. with some bunny meat well it's what they used to be back in the 30s and they do multiply pretty quickly don't they yeah that's why you used to be able to get them at state fair it wasn't just a jinky little kid prize for your kid it was fucking a meal for the family you know a possibility <laughs> right. for future meals as well yeah yeah right yeah okay take them home and breed them but there's a one of those spoof pages, one of those like shit posting pages on Facebook that makes me laugh. It's about uh, a a farm for dog meat, and it's all about the humane harvesting of dog meat and all the wonderful recipes and great things you can do with the dog meat and all this stuff. <laughs> I mean, it's not real. Obviously, they're yeah, not out there harvesting not, yeah. stray dogs to keep the streets clean, but. <clears throat> As an owner of a pet rabbit, I can see the parallel in someone saying, hey, I'm just going to farm some bunnies for some meat. And somebody saying, hey, I'm just going to farm some dogs for some meat. It's really the same Yeah, thing. yeah. 
hey, I'm just going to farm some cows for some meat. Right. So I, oh. I had to fight the urge to get defensive in the yeah, name of right? all the voiceless <laughs> little bunnies out there. But I didn't. I, I, I typed some stuff out and thought about it. And then I read yeah, man. <laughs> do, do the Abraham Lincoln. You write out a letter and call him every name under the sun, and then you screw it up and throw it in the bin. Yep, that's exactly what I did. Yep. Burn it. I, yeah, there's yeah. so many comments I don't send. Yeah, I there's just write them out ten percent maybe. My test. Yeah, and then I just hit discard. Mm-hmm. Hmm. But that's all. That's all the comment is. It's a, they're actually only to do with us. When, uh, when people comment, it's got nothing to do the, to the with the person they're commenting to. They, they might think it does, but it actually doesn't have anything to do with that. Well, at least in small yeah. some aspect. Again, you get on Twitter, and the, one of the it's where I learned that trick to type it out and then really think about whether or not I want to press send because it's a commitment at that point. You press yeah. that send button, and you're committing to a conversation. Maybe one sided, maybe not. Maybe it's just for the people that are reading it because the person you're talking to isn't going to pay a lick of attention to what you're saying. But it's mm. going to take time. It's going to take frenetic energy. It's going to take all this other shit. If you type it out and you press send, then you're going to get a response. And now you've committed to responding again. And it's a back and forth until hopefully this back and forth comes to some natural conclusion mm. where you can both part ways and that's that and it's never that way shit like that never no, it's not never, the internet so it's never that's that <laughs> you just delete discard have yeah, a nice day no i'll go pet my bunny Indeed. i'm offended <laughs> mm-hmm. well thanks guys this has been absolutely great um, it has been good all right yeah well um i shall be around and, and I'll, I'll be in touch for the cam squared and um yeah, um, Mike, um, if, if you want to send Walt, um, you can send Mike my my details if you want. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then um, send me an email and um, we'll get you on with Bernie maybe and, and then go through some stuff. Sounds fun. Go. Yeah. yeah awesome. that'd be cool. Definitely good. All righty, amazing people. It was fun. Have an uh, amazing night. You're all off to bed. I'm, I'm, I'm just starting my day. You're just getting kicking, right? Well, thank I'm you for doing kicking. it, my friend, so early. And you as well, Mike. I know you're out of your normal time zone, time frame, et cetera. So, guys, it was great. Love y'all. Thank y'all so much. Thanks, Chat. Thanks, Thank y'all. Jimmy, thank y'all. Josh, Bob, Mike, and everyone in chat. Have an awesome Bye. day, night, morning. Thanks, Catch guys and dolls. <laughs> Thank you guys. Always a pleasure. Always a grand time. Thank you guys. Still haven't got the specifics for next week down just yet, but we do have some things in the works one way or the other. I'll leave it at that. Um, What else? Nothing. Ironworks every Tuesday and Friday morning, kicking off at 4 a.m. Central to 6 a.m bright and early dark and early however you like to say it otherwise we're right here every friday evening 5 5 30 ish we love you liz yeah that's it right here have no sphere iron Row media we love you be good be well bye-bye stay awesome blood is a feral fluid <laughs> i learned that tonight it is. <laughs>